In response to Cat Williams' recent claims that Steve Harvey has stolen jokes, comedic actor John Krasinski has also gone public with allegations claiming that Steve Harvey stole his bit of looking into the camera for comedic effect after something wacky happens. Krasinski continued, Everyone who watches Harvey on Family Feud knows that the Steve Harvey stare looks an awful lot like the Jim from The Office stare. Sure, he's doing a black version and he has a mustache, but at the end of the day, it's my bit. It's one thing when he does a weird look to the contestants for comedic effect, but when my man is looking right down the barrel, that's Krasinski territory and everyone knows it. John Krasinski continued, If you watch Hanging with Mr. Cooper, you will clearly see he never stared down the barrel for comedic effect. Then out of nowhere on the feud, it's looking at the camera baffled, looking at the camera expressionless, and looking at the camera disappointed at the contestant's vulgar guess. Jim, Jim, Jim. I've wrestled with this for years and I appreciate how big of a fan of mine he is, but it's been a well-known secret in Hollywood for years and we've all just been too afraid to say it. Actress Jenna Fisher corroborated the story stating that she remembers Steve Harvey just kept showing up to the office set and stressing what an enormous fan he and the entire black community was of John Krasinski's work and states at one point he cornered me asking if I thought John would sell the bit to him but when I explained to Steve that John would sell his firstborn before he parted ways with staring into the camera for comedic effect he stormed out huffing and puffing while yelling tell John we can do this the easy way or the Harvey way. His choice. I now know that the Harvey way meant him just stealing it. The boys. The lads. The dudes. This is The Boys Cast, the first podcast exclusively for the boys. Boys. For the boys. <laughs> you already know what it is. You know what? Hit that subscribe button hit because... It. Smash it. Smash the... And you know what? Actually, though, because we have... And I understand because we have a way more listeners uh, than uh, the ratio of what subscribe, which is fine because most people just watch stuff and they don't subscribe. But we're at ten thousand away, so hit that subscribe button, yeah, get that just, plaque for us, just get us the plaque, get another plaque. You know what I mean? Little plaque on the wall. We are out here. And by the way, uh, we've been on the top two hundred charts the last little while in a bunch of different countries. Yeah, and it goes in and out. But North uh, Korea. One of the only Estonia. One of the only comedy podcasts, and obviously there's a few others that have mm -hmm. built it like that without uh, just without building it on guests. Yeah, true. That so there's the pattern. Yeah. And listen, there's that some there's some stuff that's been happening lately in New York. And I could make some jokes about these Jewish <laughs> channels. I, you know, listen. You could make some <laughs> jokes about how it resembles a rodent coming up from the sewers to get a slice of cheese. I'm not that guy to say we're those not, kind of we're, things. We're we're <laughs> not that. Guys. I could come out here and say, "Listen, the Jewish people have built tunnels, and then there's these huge tunnel rackets, and when you get to the end of it, there's a big tomb, and that's where Jerome Powell keeps his gold bars." That's not the kind of thing. No. That I say over here. No. I'm not mentioning the blood rituals that might happen. That's for no. you and your family. The soiled mattresses. <laughs> that's that not the kind of thing that I would do. I could say. <laughs> You know, I could, if anything, I could give some people some inside info. But then sure. on the way to this podcast, I realized that Danny, coming from Brooklyn, goes through his <laughs> unique <laughs> awfully sewer system. Awfully dusty. <laughs> awfully dusty, coming out of the sewers. <laughs> with he, a, he accidentally left his miner's lamp on. With a bit of on. cheese on his face. <laughs> I had the light. <laughs> Oh, oh, what? <laughs> Forgot to take it off from my overnight shift. Oh, you know what? Let's change these, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. We just had to change our light setup. Oh, Danny just turned it right off there. You just pressed the button there, pal. Press the button. Where's Listen. The Which button? Well, just speaking of lights, you just press it. Which one? The, one of them. Press it. Push. There you yeah. go. Pal. Welcome <laughs> to my dark layer. <laughs> Those are things I could say. <laughs> Dean just had a dusty cheese face. <laughs> We're not that kind of podcast. Not that kind of podcast. I like Danny's video where he said they had the foreskin lair. <laughs> if you're fucking a conspiracy fucking, guy right now, oh buddy, your brain's got to be exploding. Oh, it's so hard, man. Imagine, and, you know, I've, I'm a big, you know, I like my conspiracies. I do a show about it. Low value mail. This 
man, watching people go because here's the thing: no explanation will be satisfactory. Even if they go, you, they were harvesting adrenochrome down there. They were killing Gentile babies. There will be so many people go. Yeah, but what else? What were else they, were they? What doing? else were they really <laughs> getting up to down there? Okay, that's the story we're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They go. Yeah, that's just what we're getting <laughs> spoon fed by the fucking mainstream media. Is there anyone that was right about this and is just like their lids being blown that they were vindicated? Like, I'm yeah, not- that one guy you didn't see. The, the dude who's like this. No, Fox. no, no. You're saying oh. there was a guy that was saying, I'm pretty sure I hear Yiddish under the. Yeah, he goes, I hear house. Yiddish and digging a month ago. He goes, dude. he goes, Am I crazy? I mean, that is that is uh, straight up. Uh, there, a little bit. If I was like that, if I started trying to go to sleep and I just heard, dun, 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 <laughs> I would a little bit be like, Yo, am I losing it? I'm losing it. Dude, imagine I'm, 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 I'm on the I'm on too dark of a web right now. For sure. And you're on. Tu- you're, <laughs> this guy's on Twitter being like, the Epstein files are coming out tomorrow. There's gonna be a big bombshell. And, his- and, then, and then he goes, "What the? Am I hearing Yiddish? How does that? Is Yiddish sound? It's it's like German and I Hebrew. It's, yeah, it's like yeah, oh, but it sounds like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Can you imagine you're you're on the internet being like, like this Epstein thing, the Jewish conspiracy, and then you're oh yeah, what are you doing? You're like <laughs> yo, I'd be fucking that would put you in the padded walls, oh, my friend. Literally, the guy deleted the tweets too because he goes, people are like, where are the tweets? And he goes, I deleted them because like I was getting people were like talking shit about me. So then, but he had a screenshot of holy them. shit, he, literally one month ago buddy <laughs> that is a real horror movie though if <laughs> you get just brought down I mean, in the <laughs> those fucking like orthodox dudes they're, they're very uh, children of the corn vibes if you ever meet them they're they're odd balls <laughs> well, rolling stone said twitter explodes with anti-semitic anti-semitic misinformation after the secret tunnels were found under the nyc synagogue well, we're still we're still getting to the bottom <laughs> of this so let's not get too ahead of ourselves Rolling Stones. Uh, okay, so Danny, if you were to, what are the? <laughs> I still don't. I kind of don't get it. I know you know this more than me, and you talk to some yeah. other people. What the fuck are is happening? I'll okay, t- so I'll yeah, yeah yeah. You just tell from well, scratch. We'll, we'll see, and you know this might age poorly because this is, comes out in two days. Who knows? But from this is the this is the story that uh, Joe, Joe uh, this guy Joe the lawyer who's an Orthodox Jew. I messaged him yesterday. I go, what's going on here? He the fucks he up listens, here. He listens to the pod. He's the guy who had the black Hebrew Israel let's see the pennies at him yes or whatever and then he probably uh, collected them but um, he uh, basically said that there were these like young kids at the Chabad thing which is like one of the Orthodox Jewish like their like sects or whatever in their main headquarters in Brooklyn uh, they started they wanted to like expand the synagogue like literally have more space so then they just started digging in the basements which is like insane <laughs> But they and I've seen another thing saying someone was like there was like this one like rabbi who died. Hamas and, isn't the only people that can make nah, tunnels. Nah, is what no, they sir, saying. no, sir. Jews can do it too. But then apparently I saw another thing where there's like some rabbi who like they uh, all, some of them like idolize who's dead. He's like this like rock star rabbi dude who like died because they like no like dude if you go to these other houses they have really? photos of this rabbi. He's like, the man. He's like the man. Yeah. He's was like, this guy like, smashing all the Jewish chicks? Uh, I probably not actually. It's not, Pulling they, on their they, fake hair. <laughs> <laughs> Usually doesn't get their fucking wigs. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, apparently he wanted to expand the synagogue too. So I think there some people are like they're following in like his like directions. This is an ode to him to be like we're trying to make the thing bigger or whatever. So anyways, they were digging and then uh, they got caught by like the people who like run it because these are like between sixteen and like mid twenties, like teens, whatever. And then they, they were like, you have to stop this. They're like, and then they brought in. Uh, engineer because they're like you're gonna literally what? ruin our building like you can't just dig you know there's these are not basements like, uh-huh. you're like you're like you're gonna collapse the building and you're like maybe kill somebody i don't know anyways so they brought in these structural engineers to like assess the damage told them to stop <laughs> then they kept doing it at which point then they called the police like the people are like the reason the police were there was because they called the police well the the jewish community has been saying oh it's these extremists that did this well, they're all extremists like the chabad is like to normal jews you're like like they're all extremists, okay. right? <laughs> but but anyways, they were like, yeah, it was like these kids who are essentially like they wouldn't listen to us. They kept digging, so then they called the police on them. But then what he says, uh, Joe is like, a lot of them are in America illegally. They're all they're not from they're not Americans. Which is if you 
you see that one clip Ooh. of the of the New York City cop, and they, he goes, "We don't do this in America." He goes, "Where are you from?" And I think the one guy said Israel, but he's like, "Well, oh, you think it might be Israel?" Well, no, no, no. Actually, <laughs> I thought they were all Israeli, but actually, he says they're actually not. He, Where is uh, he saying they're from? He then? says they're from all over. He, he goes, "They're from like so, some will be from like South America, Eastern Europe. Like they're from all over." Uh, <laughs> and but they he, come in, and are they here living there? Yeah, he goes. So, some of them are squatting in the tunnels. That's why, like, and again, people are like, like, yeah, they're like that mattress is not from a squat or that mattress is from like a fucking blood ritual or whatever. But like, because there's like the dirty mattress with either a blood or a feces stain. I'm personally going <laughs> to lean towards feces, <laughs> knowing them. I'm going to go. That's a shit stain. But. uh <laughs> People will be like, yeah, you're just covering for them. You are, though. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Dude, if this turns Before out... Before the good. podcast starts, Danny, he, said, <laughs> he goes, do you mind if I take the lead on this one real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I, I made Ryan uh, send me all the questions in advance, 24 hours in advance, just so I could vet them. <laughs> now, Danny, uh, some people are oh, saying... Was it on our list of uh, agreed-upon questions, Ryan? <laughs> uh, but anyways, he said they were like living Danny's there. Danny's reading off his hand right yeah. now. <laughs> He said that they were living there. Do you have an earpiece in? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> From right to left. Yeah, yeah, I'm going right to left. Um, but anyways, and he says it's like they're all going to get deported. And they were just like, they're all just here. Because the thing is, they all come here. They probably come here on like a tourist visa. And then they just never leave and stay in the tunnels. And, and yeah, they were like staying in the tunnels. And, and then they, they're putting cement in the tunnel. Well, the the actual like guys who run the city. Well, why don't they just do the same thing that the other immigrants are doing? Where they're like, "Hey, I'm taking refuge, and I want." Well, because you have to do. There's a uh, format for that. You can't fly in as a tourist visa. Oh, That's what it is. And okay. these Jews, these soft hands. A lot of Jews, people, by the way, they're not walking. A lot here. of people, by the way, when we were talking about the immigration thing, said a big part of it was Trump made a law that uh, if you come, you have to seek refuge in the first country you go to. Mm. So you can't go through another country. Yeah, to you get can't to go America. Through, yeah, yeah, I know. And then, uh, yeah, and he it, made Mexico, I think, uh, do something. Well, because well. so many people were just like lollygagging through nine countries because a lot of the people have to America is only tied to two countries yeah, right? yeah, yeah 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 so and yeah. there were people I think flying into Canada and doing this but they got thing. rid of it apparently and that oh, was sure. a big that was a so you were you had a good explanation of why the things gotten out of hand uh -huh. but they were adding but that to it that, that's saying it, one okay. of the other big things is they changed that law that says you can uh, now go to through a country to get to the next country right, whereas right, before right. you couldn't you do have that to go, right, right, okay. which actually the law kind of makes sense it was like if you're saying like I'm seeking refuge it's not like oh let me pick which you know yeah i'll, I'll, I'll cruise around and see which country yeah, i walk will through seek countries. refuge in because sure. i'm my I'm, my life's in danger if your life's in danger it's like you go to the country you go to i guess right yeah and like mexico is not some i mean it's obviously i don't think it's considered it's not a third world country it's i think it would be second world whatever sure develop, developing so but you saw you told me that there was uh i saw the video too but then this guy from canada essentially was a reporter that got arrested for yeah, David, interviewing. David but anyway, the last the thing with the street tunnels, interviews, though. street interviews is becoming dangerous. But yes, tell me sorry. <laughs> the, the last thing with the, the tunnels, tunnels is so then the people who like run the synagogue are like we're filling it with cement. Like that wasn't like the so city. They're, they're, in they're like, it. look, they're like you're gonna literally collapse the building with your fucking stupid tunnels. So they're like we're just gonna fill it up with cement. But then everybody's like, oh, they're filling it up with cement. Why are they doing that? What's getting what, filled? What, what are they trying to hide? <laughs> and who knows? Maybe maybe it's uh, some stuff's gonna come out and that they're gonna do a dna test on that mattress and it'll come back human blood or something I don't know. <laughs> Go, goat carcass yeah like they'll be like yeah this is like some missing kid that they've been looking for for the adrenochrome lab yeah, yeah, <laughs> some missing kid yeah yeah so we'll see jesus but yeah the toronto Anyways, yeah, David, street this, interviews yeah. are becoming a very dangerous endeavor uh, right now well this is fucking crazy just because i saw this dude from rebel news uh david uh, menzies is this um reporter he was just trying to ask uh krista friedland who's like this uh World Economic Forum puppet chick who's like uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Canada mm -hmm. and uh, he just tried to ask her a question and he's like following you know like they follow like politicians and he's like hey like what are you asking or thing or whatever and then this police officer like there's like a pole and they like walk around this pole and then a police officer like kind of like just like kind of sticks his like just 
kind of you know gives him like a little shoulder check like sticks his arm out and then the police officer's like you're under arrest for assaulting a police officer and he's like what yeah he's like i'm literally just trying to ask like this politician a question and they're like no you're under arrest and you can tell the other cop was like fuck like this is probably not because the guy's like goes on this insane power trip and he's like you're under arrest like i'm the police like you are under arrest for assault which is like pretty serious assaulting a police officer <laughs> yeah. and it's like he moved into you can see it's on video he bumped into him and then it was like you're under arrest and all he's doing is just trying to ask like a politician questions you're like hey and as an advocate for the street interview community yeah. that should be something we're allowed to do <laughs> yeah it was, i mean it was fucking crazy like i just watched it. i was like i can't believe this because generally these are the kind of things that happen in like not uh, advanced countries, but I guess Canada's and they're taking a little step back. So one other thing that Danny also is the 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 voice on today mm. is you were telling me Danny had a lot of info. Yeah, <laughs> the man with the man with the info. And people are like, yeah, uh, fake news on the Jew stuff. <laughs> Just like to be on record. Well, I guess this is more juice stuff, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC Twitter account got hacked because so Bitcoin. Uh, they basically we explain it again. You're this is okay, your so, domain. Uh, Bitcoin is supposed to. There's supposed to be like an ETF coming where you can just buy spot Bitcoin as an ETF, though. Yeah. So you don't have to like self custody it. Anyways, people have been waiting for like this approval from the SEC, and then the SEC tweeted out uh, on Tuesday, which would be yesterday, but not if you're listening. That. Uh, they're like it's approved and then bitcoin like literally spiked like you know five thousand dollars or something and then they deleted the tweet and they're like someone hacked our account the sec twitter account that's why they literally said right? they, someone hacked the sec twitter account and uh well, i saw a lot of people are like oh they should be held accountable for that or whatever but i don't even know what that means but what does that mean yeah what does that mean they're just like we haven't yet and like there's part of me was was thinking you know maybe do people make money on that uh yeah, I mean there's definitely money made because I guess it like no went question. up and people probably sold. Dude, it then... went from like four. It went from like forty four thousand, like forty eight thousand, back to like forty four thousand. I didn't, so. I didn't notice because I don't follow it. It was in like a minute, like or two minutes, oh. or something. like it was or five minutes or something, like very short period of time. But then Twitter like confirmed that I guess like the SEC Twitter account they like didn't use two-factor authentication come on yeah and then uh someone, come on someone, someone got access to the phone number and gained access to it i mean dude if you were, the thing is you are fucking unless you are like the smartest smartest criminal like you are asking to go to jail if, if you actually are like hacking into the <laughs> and SEC then making some huge account. trades on it yeah you're like <clears throat> so who did it you think I don't know. Like my, someone in my the tunnel? Would, no, my thought would be someone kind of maybe like it's supposed to be announced today or tomorrow and they just kind of jumped the gun on it and announced it. So you it. think they're lying and saying it was hacked? But apparently Twitter confirmed that it was hacked. So I, I guess that's what I first thought. But yeah, Twitter confirmed that it was hacked. So I guess someone just hacked into it and they probably did make a lot of money. Whoa. Potentially, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So let's talk Cat Williams here for a second. <clears throat> This interview, the interview that took the world by storm, the, correct? The largest podcast interview of all time, arguably. Is that true? It's at like 30 million views on YouTube. Bigger than Rogan and Alex Jones? Well, you don't get the numbers, I guess. So I guess that's the problem is this is the only one where there's like just legit numbers released, but 40 million views currently. Just on YouTube. On a, Just on YouTube for a... Th almost three hour podcast yeah so that's insane that's pretty crazy and cat williams does rule I've, uh, I've always really like paul says his favorite movie. comedian i've always yeah. really liked him but, like him. Yeah, yeah. but so everyone got sprayed oh he, kevin hart cedric the entertainer ludicrous chris tucker steve harvey phase on love yeah and there was a lot of obviously we could do the boys cast uh factor cap <laughs> <laughs> with one of them uh but i just want to say for me I kind of related to what he was saying about the black community because when I did my Mark's Work Warehouse commercial, yeah. they made me suck him off. <laughs> <laughs> While you were wearing a dress? Buddy, I said, well, some people might know I was the spokesperson for Mark Works Warehouse for a short period of time. And I remember I got in there and they were like, you know, obviously it's just going to be a short commercial shoot and uh, we're all going to suck you off. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, excuse me? They go, 
it's really not a big deal. Just whip it out, and uh, we're all going to take a little suckle there. <laughs> a little suckle. They go, do you not want to be a Mark's Worst Warehouse Spark? Like, Don't no. make us get my... Also, Mark wants a taste. <laughs> yeah, Mark wants a taste. Uh, they, uh, Mark that, always gets a taste. That was the best part, because Cat Williams was like... The our, our, he said Harvey Weinstein wanted to suck him off. Yeah, I wanted to suck him off because Harvey Weinstein. Well, so I will say I don't know what the point of that the, is. Before the dust settled on this, you were like, "This is a lot of salacious shit." But then a lot of people started kind of coming out, being like, "Yeah, he's lying a lot." <laughs> Look, obviously he's lying a bunch. But it felt it was really fun. But it's kind of anybody, like before anybody. Debunked. He's like JJ. There's like a, a like a kernel of truth behind a lot of the stuff he says. You know, but what he I mean? said one of the main things he goes with the pimp thing w- with the another Friday. Well, he obviously know. said he read three thousand books when he was seven yeah he goes he goes yeah that's i was doing the math on that i go he, yeah he said he read 10 books a day he was home he read 10 books a day for a year sure he was homeless when he was like 13 which might be true i don't i don't know and he's like he basically emancipated himself or something left his family and then it was like stealing fucking car radios he's like i was making two thousand dollars a day stealing car radios there's a lot of a lot of embellishments but like the one thing with like the another friday and the nice cubes like yeah that didn't happen. Yeah, a lot of people are kind of saying that's not exactly the way it happened. And there was a few things where he would be like, I rewrote that whole script, and you're just like, he probably did kind of, you know, give some pointers and yeah, notes he and wrote stuff like that. And it just kind of, you know what I mean? It, it, it gets a little... But, but he did out, a lot of people, uh, comics, have been outed as like pretty blatant fucking thieves from this. That's true. Like the... Steve Harvey, I think it was, oh no, Steve, uh, Cedric. Back in the day, you Cedric used to be able to get away with it a different way. stole a bit from Designing Women. The TV show Designing Women had, like, someone did a side-by-side and literally... Uh, there are some things, though, and I think that other people have said a version of this, but there's some times when they go, oh, this bit was stolen from this bit, and you kind of look at it and you're just like... I've heard a thousand people this do I've that. Nev- you know what I mean? This not I've that. Never, no, no, yeah, I didn't yeah, see that one. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying yeah, there yeah. are some things where you're just like, I think Nate Bargatze said this on a podcast too, but it was kind of true. He's like, some. I mean, we all know in our normal life, someone will be like, oh, that guy took the bit from him, and he said some version of like, I mean, y'all should be both embarrassed to be doing that. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's a thing where we go, how many people do you know that is like, oh, you know, I have that. I have, you know, I'm on every dating app, Tinder, uh, Tinder, Hinge, Airbnb, Airbnb, uh, Uber, like whatever. But like, there's just like so many bits where you're just like, it's almost like this one was public domain. And sometimes you've done bits where you're just like, yeah, this is not great. I'm sure that. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying everything I've ever done is amazing. Where you're just like, if someone's like, oh, I've done that. Be-. Like so, a lot of times they'll like, y- y- they'll be like, oh, this bit was this guy's, and you're just like, yeah, and forty other yeah, people exactly, <laughs> for sure. This one, unless this is like a public domain black thing, I can't see it though. Because maybe you wouldn't know if it's a public domain black thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know. But like the the bit from Designing Women was like the black. Remember that show, Designing Women? There's the gay black guy. It's like a show from the '80s. And then the black guy's like, yeah, I was talking to this guy. His name, he's going, you can call me Bowmanicious. And then I was like, what, your name's Bowmanicious? That's a, what a weird name. And he goes, no, call me by my initials. He, that's pretty specific. That's super specific. And then Cedric the Entertainer does that joke word for word. Okay, goes, Bowmanicious goes, is pretty this, specific. He goes, I was talking to this guy, and he says, call me a Bowmanicious. <laughs> and then I call him. I said, the Bowmanicious? Who's the Bowmanicious? And someone goes, that's CJ. <laughs> I like the joke. And, yeah, he goes, that's CJ. And he goes, what? Why do you say Bowmanicious? He goes, don't call him by my initials. Yeah, can I get a little more twang on the performance? <laughs> Bowmanicious. <laughs> 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 Too much twang. <laughs> the twang got me. The twang nearly the killed twang him. The twang nearly killed me. What happened? He had a heart attack. The doing twang a, nearly killed me. He had a heart attack doing a black accent. Bowmanicious. <laughs> that he had something stuck in my throat. <laughs> I would love if you had to fucking go to the hospital have a bl- black out accent a, injury. Come out here on a stretcher. <laughs> I'm okay, everybody. I'm motherfucking okay over here. Dude, <laughs> there is nothing funnier to me. The, and obviously, this has been going on since I started comedy and longer than that, probably. But I've always seen it. Like, it, it just always... It kind of is one of those things that makes me laugh in my core that every black comedian has a core belief that the gay mafia wants to put them in a dress. Of course, yeah. <laughs> it is, and it is so funny as a white dude, too, because, like, obviously... I, 
We've all worn dresses just as much. Like you go, yeah. If you look at every big white comedian, they all did it too. Y'all do it too. Yeah, of course. They just think they're. It's like a. Maybe they're like not paying attention enough. No, it's a masculine. Like, it's like a more masculine uh, comedic culture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe they're not paying attention enough to what's going on in like the world of white stuff, and they like just legit don't know. They're like, wait, you want? And they're like, no, we're all wearing dresses. <laughs> We're all wearing Well, dresses. obviously, it is true, though. If you're a white writer and you're like, oh, Terry Crews is going to be on your set and you can, like, you're writing him a new movie, you're like, pretty funny if he wears a dress. I mean, Hulk like, Hogan I can, wore a tutu it's in the, the big, fucking. And you know what? There's a part of it there. It's like, if you're like a big, tough yeah. black guy, like, it's even funnier, yeah, right? A big, tough black guy or t- just massive, jacked, roided out dude in well, a Well, it's tutu? the opposite of what expected, yes. yes. I mean, uh, obviously, we're backtracking the vi- official Boy Scout stances. There's nothing funny about a man wearing a dress. It's <laughs> actually pretty I'm, normal. I mean, I'm a big Kids in the Hall fan, so. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Now, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Actually, pretty reasonable for yeah, a man wearing yeah, a dress. Yeah. I can't wait for, like, the fucking Nowadays, trans that, community to drag Cat Williams. I mean, there is, this is, there is. Uh, a truth to the idea that they're trying to make everything more feminine, obviously. Yeah, yeah for sure. And they're obviously like, you know, they want to get the gay shit out there. Uh-huh. But I think a lot of the dress stuff is like, it is funny. Yeah. <laughs> to it's, me, it's fun. I find it funny. Like, yeah. even dressing up like Halloween as a girl is funny. For sure. And like, the less... Am I part of the gay conspiracy now? I think so, yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm the, I'm the like, pusher. You might be the pusher. But also, I'm the gay the, agenda. The, the more homophobic and less you're into it as a comedian, the funnier, funnier it is. is. Yeah, you're like there's like it's like an actual correlation. Yeah, because like, well, if you're, if you're not liking it, makes it funnier. Like if they go, Cat Williams put on the dress. You go, I would love to put it on the dress. You go, ten percent less funny. Just with that enthusiasm, <laughs> this is now instantly less funny because you're enthusiastic about it. If you find it a bit, you go, this is gonna be hilarious. But there is different standards because it's the same thing where you know it's like I think we're a little more like hipster than. Uh, than the black community sure uh, i think probably we don't have the exact same because uh comedic sensibilities as deaf comedy jam no. but there is this thing where it's like they are trying to please two things right because i think in the white thing is just like what we don't like why is that even funny and their thing they're like you don't understand i'm gonna get shit from my people yeah the same thing that we might have a thing where here be an example like if you went on some t- talk show and just like completely was like let's say you picked like a conspiracy theory and you were just like oh these fucking retards that believe conspiracy theories you'd be like okay but like in my world it's actually not that crazy and also we're right yeah and that's how they see it they're like okay actually we kind of think it's like gay to put on a dress and you're being a bitch and i also agree with that yeah yeah yeah. do you know what i mean that's fine no, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that it's it's more just like the two, they're pl- trying to please two different, you know, you can't uh, please two gods at the same time. Yeah. That's them trying to do this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they just, they don't, they don't want to be gay on, but like, it's, on, in it's like a deep rooted, it, it's, yeah. it's kind of like if you go down every conspiracy theory, like what you say, there is like a deep rooted uh, belief that the Jews kind of run everything. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a deep rooted belief that every comedi- black comedian has, not every single one, but like <laughs> yeah. so many of them have that it's like, yeah, of course they're trying to put you in a dress. That's yeah. like, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's honestly probably like goes back to like slavery or it's like, you know, there's like maybe you know, yeah rooted in like the buck breaking or whatever, like where they're trying to literally like, you know, demean you. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like the white masters. And then you get some like nerd white writer that went to Harvard and worked on National Lampoon and now he's writing movies and you're like I promise that wasn't really what I was up to. <laughs> he goes, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm marched, brother. <laughs> brother, I marched. Br- brother, man. <laughs> the dress is... Uh, no, because, yeah, especially because... Red Robin pe- D'Angelo, I marched, brother. Yeah, nerdy white people don't even see it like that. They see it as like, no, no, no. I love the black community and the gay community. Yeah, we're bringing you Both all equally in. oppressed, both equally... I'm your hero. Yeah, <laughs> I'm standing up for both of you. No, no, no. You don't understand. To make it even, I'm putting the gay guys in blackface. Yeah. So I- <laughs> <laughs> what it comes down to at the end of the day is there's a Jewish gay agenda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> I think that's what's going on. Because there are a lot of people. If you look in the comments, you go, yeah, "It's the Jews that are trying they, to put you in the dress." They literally go, "Who's putting them in the dress? Who exactly? Who's putting everybody in dresses?" <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> You're right, though, because that is good. Yeah, dude, I there's nothing I love more than the fucking OG black. Dude, if you watch, um, 
Dick Gregory videos. Yeah. So I was I was in a wormhole where I was getting really into like the old like ship. You know, how Chappelle kind of became like the philosopher style comedian. Yeah. There was like a lot of them that kind of like in their later years became a philosopher, like really sitting on the stool, kind of. Yeah. You know, like it's quite problematic. I understand. What's problematic? Sitting on the stool. But we'll oh get, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, I know what he's talking about, but it doesn't matter right now. But the yeah, just the like really sort of getting down to business, letting people have it. Like you know, let's level with you. It's, it's the brother man, brother yeah, man, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the also the white teacher that would you know come let's on rap. kids like let's rap right. Let's rap. But Dick Gregory, if you go watch his old videos, type in Dick Gregory Cosby. He does. He has like a three. He has like a a four hour interview and then a two hour one. And his it's like. The whole thing is about how, like, Bill Cosby's super innocent, by the way. Yeah. And the theory is pretty funny. His theory is, like, essentially that Bill Cosby didn't want to make this new movie or, like, he didn't want to make another show that they want to make or he didn't want to do something that the industry wanted him to do. So that's how they, like, got all the girls to accuse him of that. Okay. But, like, I'm there is not a single... Um, like black event that he like can't explain like really conspiratorial like Tiger Woods cheating was oh, a I conspiracy like there's not a single uh, one and it's like and he t and the way he says it is like it's we have a lot of buddies like this that are just like you're a sheep it, it's very you're a sheep energy oh, I, love it. I gotta go watch yeah it. yeah dude you have to check this out it's very like and they'll be like so uh they'll kind of I'm paraphrasing stuff but it's like essentially he's like so they got all the girls to accuse Bill Cosby like they were all in on him he was like <laughs> you know if you're not gonna listen I don't even have to <laughs> it's like very you know I'm, I instantly I'm, love this listen guy. if you want to be in the matrix you can be in the matrix yeah, like yeah, he's, he's kind of OG matrix guy. his energy yeah, he's saying it in a blacker way right yeah. obviously but his whole whole thing is obvious like uh, uh, who, who are these people like yeah, am I, like i'm wasting my time I'm wa I'm, he's, it's, like, i'm wasting my time yeah, talking to these people because it's so it's one plus one equals two for him yeah right? yeah he goes it's so obvious like what don't you get <laughs> yeah and they're probably again there probably is some like kernels of truth to like all the stuff he's saying you know what i mean yep. but <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> like he, it is possible that like a lot of people knew about these things and he pissed off the wrong person and then they released the info like of course there's some yeah. but it's there's not a single event that can't be explained he, I like, imagine he by the like, gay mafia to this guy right yeah yeah I, I can't imagine he has too much evidence uh, backing up his claims, but <laughs> he seems. Like, I'm sure even Bill Cosby's like, yeah, he I mean, you'd be. It wasn't honestly. He would spit on you right now if he saw Danny's <laughs> energy. This is the energy that the reporter gives him sometimes, and he does not take kindly to it. I love it. But he's also like 80 or something. Right? Oh, he's really he's old dead now. I think, right? Yeah, I think he died. Yeah, yeah. Right. But there's a lot. But it, it, rest it's, in power, brother. It's like my. It's just my favorite thing that it's like the. Uh, it really is like a deep-rooted belief that yeah. th that's the goal is to get you an address, right? Yeah. And I guess the theory behind it, and there, there is, again, there's probably some truth to this, where essentially what they're saying is they know that if they put you in a dress, they know that they can control you. Whereas if you're going to fight the dress, what else are you going to fight? Right. You know what I mean? The idea is like, well, we need to put him through this little uh, um, purity test, right? So they go, hey... I mean, the same thing happens with politics. It's like, you know, are you going to march for this thing? Are you going to say this? It's like, this guy doesn't have the right opinions. Like, we can't control this motherfucker. Whereas if, you, if you're if you out there and you go, oh, I'll put the dress on, whatever you need, you go, we're going to be, right, right, right. this guy's controllable. You think Dick Gregory ever went like on a trip to Africa to like revisit his black blackness or whatever, and then he gets off the plane and everybody's wearing a dress and he's just like... <laughs> Goddamn <laughs> shameful what's going. They got to you too, huh? <laughs> They're all wearing dresses. That's so funny. <laughs> they go to a mosque. They got to you yeah, too. Yeah, they go to like Oman or something. They're like all wearing dresses. They're like, oh. <laughs> they got to you guys too. They got to you too. God damn it. <laughs> so that was, that's my, that's just my, always my favorite thing. So I, I love it when it kind of pops up because yeah. it's just like a, such a funny uh, conspiracy and it's so specific. You know what yeah. I mean? And also it was like the Chappelle, because Chappelle talks about it a lot too, right? And he was like, you know, I was just in my trailer smoking weed or whatever. And they're like, come and they're like, hey, we want to uh, put you in a dress for this script. And it was like, the funny part to me was even too, he was like, I'm sitting in my trailer, like smoking weed all day. And it was just like, I mean, I could see if you were sitting in your trailer smoking weed all day. And then, <laughs> you know, they have this uh, new scene. And then the person comes in, they're like, we wrote a scene. And you're like, kind of like a little paranoid. And they're just like, yeah, we want you to put in a dress. And they're all just like, these white guys just sort of skul skul skulking over you. And you kind of like, the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, it, I could see that easily being like, what are you fucking honkies up to? <laughs> Honky. <laughs> Honky. <laughs> 
Now, if you're struggling with anxiety or depression, you are not alone because millions of Americans are searching for ways to feel better, but feel like they've exhausted every single other option and they don't have anywhere to turn. If that sounds like you, guided ketamine therapy from Mind Bloom could be the game changer. So if you don't know what it is, Mind Bloom is the leader in ketamine therapy, having helped tens of thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression. Mind Bloom's expert clinicians and guides can help you feel better in days, not weeks, and you can complete treatment entirely from the comfort of your home, which is what a lot of people want to do. In a study of over a thousand Mind Bloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only four sessions. I'm sure you've probably heard about stuff like this before, but now Mind Bloom has new programs that go beyond depression and anxiety to help you overcome challenges in your everyday life. So, right now, Mind Bloom is offering our listeners a hundred bucks off your first six session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com slash boyscast. Use the promo code boyscast so you can break free from your anxiety and depression, feel better faster with Mind Bloom. Mindbloom.com slash boyscast and use the promo code boyscast. Now, when you're trying to get in shape, Fit bods like having your own personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper. You can work out anywhere mm-hmm. or without equipment. And you can it's very easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. So I personally am on the road a lot. You can type in the equipment that's in the gym or like Yeah, yeah it works. You no I mean, gym, it works great. Said. Yeah, you have no gym or I mean like I use my gym in my uh, building and doesn't have that much stuff in it. And the best part is like I you know, I always say it, but it just it gives you exercises that you would kind of never think of doing. Yeah. Just like these kind of weird, like weird bicep curls that it's like this one is like the waiter curl where you kinda hold the barbell like this and it kinda like it's just like parts of your bicep where you're like, I wouldn't know what didn't even think to do this. I know. When and you're, it, it yes, kind of sir. cues you up and like lets you know, you know, try these different things. So I used it the other day because uh, n- uh, New Year's I was trying to go to the gym and it was closed. Mm-hmm. But not for me, man. No. <laughs> the grind doesn't yeah. stop. So FitBod creates personal workout routines based on your goals, fitness level, available equipment, adapts as you improve so each workout will be challenging, push you to make new progress, attracts your muscle recovery so you can avoid burnout and keep up with your momentum, and you learn new movements the right way with over a thousand demonstration videos. So add FitBod to your workout essentials and join FitBot today to get your personalized workout plan. You get 25% off your subscription or you can try the app free at fitbot.me slash boyscast. That is F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash boyscast. So <laughs> that was funny to me. That's great. Also, it's great is that like with Cat Williams, he's basically saying every comedian sucked everyone's dick except for me. Yeah, yeah I'm the only non-gay one. <laughs> yeah, it's Dicks were getting sucked right and left. I was just in the corner smoking a cigarette being like, that ain't me. He's so badass that people were wanting to suck his dick and he was saying no. Dude, would that, that was so funny though if you ever booked a role and they asked to suck your dick. <laughs> you go, when you were in your Canadian Tire commercial, they asked to suck <laughs> you off. <laughs> you go, All right. <laughs> Is this is this Actra? When I was the voice for Keystone Beer, <laughs> I just booked a voice acting commercial. Yeah, voice. I was the voice for Keystone you Beer. You the voice real, don't you? <laughs> I was the voice for a couple beers actually for a while because I got a good, I got a good little bit of a good, got, a, got a party boy. V- I did have, voice. I do have a good beer commercial voice. I don't know if this is what it was, but I can't really remember. I go <laughs> Keystone Beer, the beer of the summer. I can't remember what I was doing. <laughs> I had one where they, I was doing a surfer. I was like, ah, oh, bro, you don't want to crack a cold one? Uh, Something like that. <laughs> dude, voice kicks are the fun. That was them emasculating ultimate, me. It's like, ultimate. do a surfer. You go, aren't you going to be a surfer? That's what you get for wearing the dress, though. That's what you get for that's what Hollywood you get your gives Keystone you. Beer no, voice Hollywood commercial. is like you get to be like one of the fucking like the M and M's or like you know you get you go you wear the dress, <laughs> you wear the dress, you get to be like the voice of the green M and M, something like that, you know, for life. And you're like that pays half a million dollars a year or something crazy. What's your dignity worth to you, pal? There's a number. <laughs> Everybody's that's got so a funny. Ted DiBiase. Mid-dress, Everybody's you're like, got a price. Oh, okay. On the dress, what do I got? Greeter number three in the Walmart commercial. <laughs> you can thank us later. <laughs> the saddest thing is like for a yeah, Canadian like showbiz, you go, know, if you wear the dress, uh, it can be an extra in Mr. D season seven. <laughs> <laughs> 
The truth is they want everyone in a dress. They, they definitely dress. do that. There is a benefit to being in a dress. Mm -hmm. And there is the... The if anything, you got to get out in front of it. You don't. You got to put yourself in the dress before they. I'm the dressman. Yeah, you go. I wear a dress. <laughs> I just wear a dress. Just show up to the thing. You go. This is how cooperative I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But also, then you can never be like they put me in the dress. You go. No, I put I me <laughs> in a dress. That's a good point. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Fucking casting director put me in a goddamn dress. No one put me in. I yeah. wore the dress. <laughs> Uh, so I thought one interesting thing is Richie Redding posted this video, but we have a buddy, yeah. Richie Redding, who's like super funny comedian, toured with Cat Williams like crazy. Yep. And he's like a white dude that isn't particularly urban. And, no, not at all. And confirmed like exactly where Cat Williams is. Yeah, so there. he basically said, he goes, dude, I uh, toured with Cat Williams and he basically randomly, he was like friends with promoters. I think it was in like... Um, uh, in Philly in Philly. It was Philly. Yeah, I thought it was Atlanta. I think it was I think the show maybe I don't know. I thought, I thought he was, was like whatever. He, he was, did some show in Philly where like he basically had to open up for like some like like Wu Tang or something crazy. Somehow he got in some weird bill. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, so, like, some, so, like he told the story to us before but essentially like some comic he did a favor for and like But he murdered and he became Cat Williams opener. Yeah, for like 160 shows. And he said the same thing. He goes so I I had like a really good set. And then I was like, oh, Cat Williams didn't see it. And then basically, Cat Williams just comes into the dressing room and hands him an envelope, and it was 10 grand. Yeah, like something like crazy amount of money, like way more. This than is when he, yo, he probably, yeah, he probably made 25 grand a year tops, you yeah, know? Yeah, or whatever. And then he's just like, you'll be on the road with me. He's like, you got my word. And then he's just like, just like that. He's like, I was 106. So it days. sounds like he does do badass stuff all the yeah, time. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of, of famous people are like known for that. Russell Peters was super known yeah. for that. I mean, Eddie De La Sebe, our buddy. Yeah. I remember he had some like family his, his uh, dad, uh, catastrophe. Away, yeah. And then Russell Peters basically. It's like bottom of flies. Yeah, he was like, look at your phone. I just yeah, sent you your yeah. first class yeah, flight yeah, back yeah. home or whatever. So we know a lot of people that do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There's a lot, I, of, a lot of good dudes. <laughs> that, I do that to people sometimes. I go, I, I go to Canada and I put some people on the bill and they go, I'm hungry. I go, look in your wallet right Look at Look in your phone right now. I just sent you 5% off Arby's. <laughs> I send a <laughs> that's a two for one at Harvey's. <laughs> I just send you a coupon. <laughs> Uh, Harvey's. I just sent you a coupon. Arby's? Do they, they, like, their <laughs> eyes light up. You go Arby's. You, say, you go. No, I said Harvey's. Uh, for Canadian <laughs> listeners, that is the worst fucking fast food chain. Used to be so good when I was a kid. I just sent you a ten. For, I just sent you a ten dollar gift dollars. certificate. <laughs> to Canadian Tire. <laughs> you don't think I read it if you spend more than a hundred dollars, you don't think I read a Canadian Tire money. I didn't know that. Someone, I think Alex Byron was like he's collecting because you can now buy bricks of Canadian Tire money on a. Uh, on eBay, because uh, Canadian Tire used to have this. Because uh, they're discontinued. This is the ultimate Canadian thing. People call the crappy tire. Crappy tire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, hot and crappy tire. <laughs> crappy tire is the ultimate dad. The crappy. shit. That's what my dad. That's what he called it. Oh yeah, we gotta go. Ah, oh, they need an oil change. You gotta go down to crappy. I am a curious <laughs> pre-internet. How did crappy tire catch on? <laughs> crappy got like, on. Because like who? Like how did that even catch on? Because it's like nobody's calling it crappy tire on TV. No. It's not. Nobody's referring Crappy to Crappy Tire was the original meme Yeah but like That's just like The original dad meme Because you're like I don't know How did my My dad like has a few friends How did they right. hear about You know Everyone There's not a single person That didn't call it Crappy, crappy tire. tire And it wasn't that crappy It was fine <laughs> <laughs> It was like Target. Target, yeah, I guess, but Target was like in the in the internet. This is like pre-internet, crappy tire. Everybody called it that. Mm -hmm. But I had that start. So the other, probably the other funniest one to me was that Cat Williams is so. <laughs> in one sentence, he goes, he was like, you know, and honestly, I got no problem with the gay community. Like, obviously, I support the gay community. It's just, that's their community. That's my community. And then, like a few sentences later, he's like, I can only hire women because I can't have men touching my blunts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't like yeah. He doesn't like he's man thinking, licking his blunt. There's gonna be a fucking man saliva on my blunt, and he's like, he can only hire he hires all guy uh, all women to work for him just because he's like, oh, wow, I'm not gonna be looking at dudes all day. I'm yeah, not I gay. Like, I like being around women. But that is such a is funny weird. point that you like hire women, and people are like, oh, because you like to support women. It's like, no, that's how straight I yeah, am. Yeah, that's how straight I am. I can't look at dudes all day Certainly long. Certainly, you can't enjoy hanging out with them more. <laughs> no. Yeah, so that is so next level straight. Where you go, I'm so straight. I can't just have. I can't have dudes around. I'm not having some tour that's a sausage fest. Yeah, yeah, which is I guess. I don't see it like that. Obviously, no, 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 no. Like <laughs> but when you hang with your friends, you're like, this is gay. Yeah, this is gay. <laughs> this is so gay. 
That's <laughs> all I can think about. Is I can't even have fun right That's now. That's hilarious so to me. Gay. Like he's like a chef. Can't, if a chef prepares your food, like if it's a guy, that's kind of yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if he goes like this. He goes, ah. Ah. Yeah. I want a chick to do that. Yo, this ain't, I don't know what you think this, <laughs> his chef comes out. He goes, here's your meal. He goes, pause. Pause. <laughs> pause. Yo, this is kind of sus. I don't know if you've been touching. Let me tell you, you put your fucking man hands all over my steak. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Ludacris came back with a rap against Kyle Williams. It's yeah, pretty crappy. Yeah. I feel like Ludacris took one of the biggest L's on this thing. It is crazy because every person that he talked shit about responded in some capacity. And a lot of them like... It was the biggest thing in the world. A lot of them didn't do a great job. But you'd think... Dude, no, agree, you probably... Sometimes. Kevin Hart probably did the okay job. I thought Kevin Hart was one of the worst ones. With no, the, he with went the on... ESPN thing? You, didn't, you thought it seemed bitter? Yeah. Okay, no, the, the most bitter by far is Phase on Love. I don't know if you know Phase. No, on tell Love. me this one. I kind of don't oh, know. Oh, Phase on Love. Phase on Love. So he talked a lot. Of, Cat Williams is like Phase on. He's like, I got 19 specials. Phase on. When's your special coming out? You don't have one. Special. I heard the thing. Phase he on said Love was like him. in a bunch of Sandler movies. Yeah, I actually was, don't really know who Phase on Love is, but he, I heard him talking. He about was him a lot. in. He's like this super fat dude who was in. Uh, he he was in a bunch of TV show. This guy he was in a bunch of TV shows. He was in the Next Friday. Oh, I know uh, him. Yeah, yeah, you know him. He was in Elf. Like he's in a million movies. Right? I got to wear the dress probably. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> You wore a couple dresses, it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, he's talking tons of shit, and then there's like a video. Phase on Love is like you can tell is um, like another guy, wrong side of his career probably does stand up. I'm sure he's a good stand up, and like probably actually sells tickets because people just know him from a million <laughs> movies. But there's a video of him being like someone is like he's like in a hotel room. It's like it looks like just this dingy like recording on an iPhone, and someone's like, "Who's your most like overrated?" Uh, and he's like kind of drunk, and he's like, "Who's your most like overrated comedian?" So he's like. Most overrated comedians. I have to say, uh, definitely Cat Williams. This is yesterday. Uh, no, I don't know when this. Clip this is, is after from. the Cat Williams thing or before? No, but there's another thing where he comes out to like explain. It, but this is, before, but you could tell they hate each other. Okay, or whatever. Because th this is like you watch this, and you go, this is so bitter of him. Because literally, they go, mm. who is the most overrated comedian in the world? And he goes, I don't know. Cat Williams is the most, and he goes on this whole thing about, and like, doesn't even like make sense, like he, uh, why gotcha. he's overrated. So, did anyone respond good? Do you think? Uh I think like Ice Cube was was reasonable. Well, he wasn't trashed though. He wasn't. Yeah, I guess he wasn't trashed. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I saw all of them. I thought the Kevin Hart thing, just the way Steve they Harvey like, fake hair is incredible. That he was wearing a fake hair flat top. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so basically it's coming out. And he said fake hair. Steve Harvey's hair sense, was actually. fake. That makes sense, actually. <laughs> it's no, so funny. He had this fake, that, fake flat top. Because he's so bald. Very bald, right? Yeah. How did he have the full head of hair? Yeah, that's a good point. Fake flat top is incredible. The world just got rocked on that. But no, I don't know. The Kevin Hart one, I thought he was like on the ESPN. He's like, oh, you know, he's... He also, I guess they're calling him liars when he's like, oh, he owned the Knicks and all this stuff. I seemed don't a little better. It seemed like it just wasn't that funny. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. His didn't seem that crazy to me because it, it just at least I actually thought Kevin Hart at least wasn't, is like, I'm not afraid of him or whatever. I thought Ludacris's wasn't like the worst one. Kevin Hart didn't strike me as a pussy though. At least it's anyway. weird to see him rap again. Yeah, I it was just does bizarre. Rap. Yeah, yeah, but he he raps in a. Do you know what I saw? Though. So Tiffany Haddish did a thing, and it was interesting because a lot of people don't like a lot of times know the com the like interworkings of comedy. So you can kind of like say things that are sort of true, but not like not actually true. Yeah, like Tiffany Haddish goes, she goes, yeah, it's true. They didn't let me. She goes, saying I never performed at the comedy st store, right? And she goes, that's true. They didn't let me perform on the white nights, but I was performed on the black nights. She goes, they wouldn't let me on those white nights, but I performed all the black nights, and she was kind of like. Which seems true, but it's like, well, no, what happened was the club has people that are passed there yeah. that work at the club, which is what you're calling the white nights. Yeah. And then when one of your friend booked the show there, a they booked show. you. But they like, she's saying it like it's the same people. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. She's saying it's like the booker at the comedy store was like, you can do the black nights, not the white nights. She's like, no, you just didn't work for the comedy yeah, store. You the but if store. someone. A, a third party put on a show that happened to be friends with you. They would book you. You know, right, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. a lot of a lot of comedy clubs say you're not allowed to film unless you work there because people will be like, post a video of them uh, performing at this comedy club and then post it there and then people will be like, oh, I didn't know you worked there. And you're like, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they like take these things very seriously. Like if you're past there, you're allowed to work there. Like they, I'm sure people have seen some docs about this story. It's like getting passed at a club is like a big deal. It's yeah. like it's like getting signed to a team, right? Kind of, yeah. 
So it's like if you go play on the court, imagine like a, a group of white people rented out Madison Square Gardens to do like a pickup basketball game, and then you did that basketball game. You wouldn't say like they wouldn't let me play on like the main black thing, but whenever the white people were playing, they let me play there. It's like, well, no, that just was a different thing altogether. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought that was like it's and like you're lying, but you're like you're lying, but it's technically true. Yeah. You know what I and mean? And then there was this one thing where I can't remember. It's, she's making it seem a, like it was like a racist a, thing. I, a bunch of things came out too that just were not true because they said that like Cedric never did that comedy store show or whatever because there was like I guess some documentary about like this guy who ran this crazy black show at the comedy store for like there was like some legendary show that like became like some huge uh, like weekly show or whatever and then, okay. like, never did it and then there was like 10 clips of him doing the show even though Cal Williams said he never did it and so I don't know there's a, there's a bunch of cab a bunch of fact I mean he says he smokes way, 20 blunts a day probably his memory <laughs> Natish probably little, does though a little foggy yeah, that's true. Yeah. But he's also an extreme, like a wild dude, right? Like yeah. we know dudes like that. They can just talk forever. Uh -huh. And it's like, just like, obviously when you just talk forever, like some bullshit comes out, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. But there was, he's super entertaining and hilarious. But the last thing I'll end with is they go, a black man in a dress, no laughing matter. <laughs> that's the <laughs> NPR article. <laughs> It's funny because NPR, NPR? I, I'm not sure, actually, I, I just found this when I was on my way here because I was just like thinking about this stuff. So this came out in 2006 Ooh. and uh, NPR did a big thing on it, basically saying, uh, it was after the Chappelle thing, but I just thought it was funny. Uh, Dave Chappelle, basic, NPR was basically taking the side of uh, Chappelle. Being is like Chappelle the reason why he it. left Chappelle's show? Is it over specifically because they wanted to put him in a dress? No, the Chappelle story about in a dress was he was saying he was on some movie and they were coming and trying to make him wear a dress. Oh, gotcha. Chappelle's story about uh, Chappelle's show, there's kind of different versions yeah, of I've it, heard, like, but essentially the gist of him leaving Chappelle's show, the kind of the most central story that's always been told about is he sort of said he was getting the wrong laughs. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said people weren't laughing the right way, which is, I mean... I, I've always kind of I, I kind of disagree with him on this and that always maybe we just but he kind of says that he was doing like racial jokes about black people and the show got so popular that people were like laughing at the, at the, at the yeah, stereotypes yeah. not like right. with him and it was I, I sort of know what you if you get I, too big you're well, like no, I it's agree impossible with you. to control well, I, so yeah that too but my take is more like that's what happens when you have anyone that makes let's say you make a niche thing about like people have said okay we're making a niche thing making fun of trailer park people right yeah and then when it gets popular it's like well now people are like laughing making fun it's impossible to have something you're you're making fun of your little like subculture and if it gets popular inevitably that's what happens and it's kind of like well yeah that's now the next thing you do is you have to like modify it. In my opinion, it's like that is not uh, a unique problem to him. No, That's like no, no, no. anyone gets super any, famous. Any critical mass, you're like, yeah, you're gonna have people who take it the wrong way or whatever. Well, here's imagine imagine you're a guy that makes fun of his wife a lot in comedy clubs, right? And then you get like really famous, and everyone now knows who your wife is, and you're coming on like being like how much she's such a bitch, and everyone like knows who she is. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. now it like feels weird. Now you're too famous. The position's yeah. different. Like so everything right, once yeah. your level of the amount of people watching it change like you've got to sort of yeah you got it because it's just a problem to solve and not yeah. it's a hard problem to solve but it does it's not like I a unique too, problem too personally comedically yeah. okay so epstein's list danny come this thing coming out. i'm not on it <laughs> this coming out you said you don't think it's as big of a deal as people said I'm it was i'm just saying there weren't there, you like, said there it wasn't was, any new... no your exact words were nothing to see here yeah and... there was no new names on it there wasn't a single new name there was just more well you were sort of saying it wasn't even a list it was a testimony it wasn't a list it was just uh court records of like testimony or whatever and there was some new like facts that came you out. said to me no specifically names, when i called you on the phone you said don't even look yeah, it's don't not worth it bother <laughs> go watch sports <laughs> It's nothing on there. <laughs> you said you said quote unquote nothing to see here. <laughs> Nothing, nothing new. Just a total. You go. Waste, you know what? Waste of paper. No, you go. You go, Ryan. You know what? I'm gonna save you the time. <laughs> I'll send it to you. And it was like accidentally had your letterhead on the list you sent me. <laughs> the one, I do like the fact that there was one name on there that was still redacted because that gives every like fucking kind of tin. Who was the redacted? Clinton. Slick will. Never know. <laughs> That's the fun of it. Slick so, Bill. We'll never know. I mean, Bill Clinton's name was on there a million times, though. So then it wasn't him. And I don't know how that works. Like, you assume that, yeah, it could be uh, just another victim. Nobody knows. But the fact that it's there. Well, my the only... 
because I, I honestly I was following it a lot and I was watching all the things and I watched everything's things and maybe it's just like my things that interest me but I didn't feel like there was that much yeah like you said there wasn't well, that wasn't much everybody new stuff. built it as the list and, and it like, just was it was not a list it was just testimony from a civil trial well the Alan Dershowitz and I think this was an Dershowitz older interview crazy, yeah. but there was a really funny Dershowitz interview because basically <laughs> Alan Dershowitz he's, he's getting dragged <laughs> he's getting down. killed right he's having but time. he did this CNN interview right and I think this I can't remember exactly when it was it might have been right after the list came out it was after no, no yeah it was, okay because it came out that he was having uh, like he, he but he was his fucked, lawyer so it's not that people on the plane like, but it's not that crazy that he'd be on the plane because he's his lawyer, right? I guess. Yeah, he right? was, and that's what he said. But he goes, yeah, but he lawyer. goes, he's like, you know, and I was on the list and asked for the lawyers, and then uh, you ask me, um, actually, uh, I don't know the exact words, but ask me, um, but you've been on this list a lot of times. Like, did you have any, have you done any of that stuff? Yeah, did you, yeah, yeah. Ask me the any, question. Did you do any of this stuff on the list? Um, you know what's really bad is what Palestine <laughs> is yeah, doing yeah. to Israel, and the hostages <laughs> have still not been returned. <laughs> These are people, and what Hamas is doing, October 7th, that is the truth. That's what he said. On I know, he goes, and he goes, and all the people dragging me online, none of them have denounced what Hamas is doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. All the people who are all my enemies, all the people <laughs> online who are saying that I'm a sexual predator, none of them have any issue with the rapes by Hamas. And they're like, whoa. <laughs> they're rapists. <laughs> quick, quick deflection. That was know? a pretty good one, though. I was like on a dime. <laughs> I mean, his... He's because maybe, he, he sort of he sort of came into it like you know and obviously uh, I'm gonna I represent people unfortunately I represent bad people that's my life and you know have you been on the list October seventh <laughs> was the worst travesty Dang. in the history of this country. He, That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. He got to that stuff a little too quickly, I think. He honestly, whoa, whoa. it was not natural. <laughs> No. So Alan Dershowitz is getting killed on it. Well, you've been getting killed for Jimmy a while. Kimmel's been throwing a hissy fit over Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel's dweeb. Yeah, but re- you know what? I thought Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, if he was smart, when uh, Jimmy Kimmel quote because Aaron Rodgers basically made a joke, being like, uh, "Jimmy Kimmel doesn't want that list coming out," but he's like kind of kidding. Yeah, and then Jimmy Kimmel goes. I'll sue you, basically. Well, but I, what Aaron Rodgers should have done is quote tweeted that, been like, "I was joking, something you used to do." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, would have yeah, been yeah, the, that that's the been, simple move. That would have been a good move. But I again, was joking. Remember blew, when you used to do that? Jimmy Kimmel blew up at like the media misrepresenting what Aaron Rodgers said because Aaron Rodgers said the thing, and then all these like you know New York Post or whatever goes. Aaron Rodgers says that Jimmy Kimmel should be worried that he's on the list. One of my like, he didn't say that, but then I know. A- but then Jimmy Kimmel starts responding to these like broken telephone things, and you're like, if he responded to what Aaron Rodgers actually said, it would be a different thing. But he's agreed. Not. Yeah, uh, it's one of my n- n- nothing bothers me more. Is when journalists uh, misrepresent a, a quote that was on video. Yeah, you're like, it's you watch it, you go, that's not what he said. Uh, it's, it drives me it's fucking crazy. up the but wall. But again, it's like you enemy know, of the people. They are the enemy of the people. Michael Malice said it best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we have one more Israel thing here. Um, sandwich from here, and I thought they gave me the wrong sandwich, but conveniently, McDonald's changed their packaging. Wow. What does that resemble? It's uh, blue like the Israel flag. Yeah, blue and white. What is this? This one? Yeah, what is this new packaging? It's the uh, McChicken wrapper. But why is it blue and white? I don't see it, I don't know. I think you do know. I think you do know. Um, I think you do. <laughs> you know what's? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know what I love is that uh, basically, like the Trump, <laughs> like Russia Gate stuff, turned literally every last person into new uh, conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yeah, I guess like so. that. Essentially, the Russia conspiracy thing, which ended up being like nonsense, essentially turned every last person. Like we're all conspiracy theorists to a degree now, whereas that was like such a. Well, how do like, you not be a conspiracy th- theorist when you're being lied to nonstop <laughs> by McDonald's? <laughs> I know what the rapper used to be, McDonald's. I have eyes, McDonald's. <laughs> I've, do I look like somebody who's not eating a McChicken? It used to come in a box. What happened to the brown box? How good is it? Uh, just berating the like cashier at McDonald's. McDonald's yeah. For like a <laughs> he's like I really I don't know what, what the rapper is apparently what actually happened is the rappers were the backup rappers but it's just blue instead of a, and they have like but, sometimes they have special weeks where they do a thing so they have these blue rappers again, and they l- use them as backup rappers let's think about this from like the crazy like her thing so she goes okay so war breaks out uh, in Israel and then McDonald's is just like giant corporation <clears throat> at the top they're like having like a executive meeting ago 
you know how we can show best show our support for Israel and not Palestine is we're going to change the wrappers for the McChicken. And not say anything. Not about say it. anything. Not post it not anywhere. Not post it. It's just like a little just wink to the like, <laughs> you know, just a little wink to everybody just to know, hey, when you Jews buy a McChicken or anybody else, or maybe it's like a subtle like mind control thing because you don't even know. You just like you bite in a McChicken and then some dopamine gets released because it tastes so good. And then you, you look at the, the thing. Blue. You see the blue and white and you go, I love Israel. But what if you look at it accidentally and say you love the police? Oh. Uh, or Finland or something accidentally. You go, oh, I love Finland all of a sudden. I don't <laughs> yeah. know why. Dude. But like it's mental to think that they would do it's that. It's mental to harass the, the, the whole th again, person about it. But she think, but again, that's like her line of thinking is must be like, yeah, they're like doing this to fuck with me. Like to fuck with all the pro-Palestine people. They purposely changed all the rappers for the McChickens in the world. Also, this girl's probably made her entire social media presence like pro-Palestine, yeah. so she's like, this is my chance to really pop off, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But just the guy goes, honestly, I don't know. And she goes, I think you do, though. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> Let me see your emails. I want to see what the emails. He goes, uh, yeah, I don't get emails. I, <laughs> that, that guy was getting... I'm 14. That dude was getting scolded like he just got booked for cheating. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm a child. What so. the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> but like, she believed it. Like, she probably... But she's probably... This is the when you have a hammer, everything's a nail kind of thing. Mm -hmm. She's... Uh, and anywhere she's going. She's like, she gets cash. She goes to like buy something. They give her like a penny change. She goes... <laughs> Penny, Do huh? I look like a Judy? <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Is this some sort of cryptic, coded language here? Just, so we, what is this, Penny? <laughs> yeah, she, goes, she goes, hey, I just noticed you just handed me some money. <laughs> Is that some sort of nod to the... <laughs> she gets like, you know those uh, junk mail where we'd like to give you a credit card? <laughs> she gets one of those. It's from like Chase Bank, so it's blue and white. She's like, what the fuck? They're everywhere. <laughs> it's, uh, you can't go it's, anywhere. You can't go anywhere without getting away from Israel. 50% off. 50% <laughs> off, eh? There are deals everywhere. That chick's going to be like at a fucking KKK rally. Short order. I know. Well, I got some bad news here for ah, you. I hate bad news. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fucking the girls are up to it. And they're not just uh, accosting McDonald's store employees right now. What? Let it grow. The Harry movie <sighs> movement wants us to embrace our body hair. And this is what the girls are up to right now. They're starting these hairy movements where they're just trying to be Chewbacca. It's really it's true, my though. most hated thing. You know what I, I've come to realize with all these things we cover is because we all the, we cover a million of these things where people just are searching for some identity in something. Come on the hairy beast, whatever. But it's just like people, <laughs> you know, you, sexy beast, sexy beast. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, but <laughs> the sexy beast is uh, w w my buddy Waldo. <laughs> Whenever he has his shirt off, we always call him sexy beast. Did <laughs> you know the what? You not know the movie? Yeah, the movie with ben the guy has his shirt off and he's always tanning. Yeah, Ben Kingsley, great movie. <laughs> sexy beast is a good reference. All right. Anyways, continue. Uh, My bad. It's all a movie. But uh, yeah, it's just like even if people are like, yeah, I'm not religious, you just you end up finding it somewhere and being like, I'm on the hair mm -hmm. movement. That's a bad religion, though. <laughs> it is, but you're like, it's it's almost just like you have to find, uh, you can't just be, even I guess even something. if you go, I'm not a tribal, where you go, well, there's a whole group of you. You are tribal. <laughs> yeah, you are. You go, I'm not. Oh, I'm not tribal. I don't subscribe mm -hmm. to that. You go, well, there's a bunch of you, and you probably go talk online about how you're not this. So then you worship the fucking hairy god. Whatever you are, and you go, you yeah, you just become that. You know what I? You know what I was sort of thinking too. Uh, is another thing about it is it's almost like. People just, uh, there was a moment where, like, even if you think of, like, the fat models and stuff like that, the, really- You just call them models, right? <laughs> now. That is true. My bad. They're just models. It's like, really what happened was people were arguing over, like, the degree of shit, yeah. where people were like, we think that this is too skinny, right? And a lot of things that people just argued over the degree, they got forced to- argue against it completely yeah you know what i mean so this where it'd be like hey we think there's too much pressure on women to like have to look a certain way they had to take that to like we don't think they should do it at all yeah there should be no pressure it's like kind of being like Which I, makes sense, it's actually. like saying a guy say it's like guys saying like we think there's too much pressure for guys to have to like make money to get dates so we're all not gonna have a job and be proud of it yeah 
Yeah, it's like you, you have to go. They, it's like they go binary on something that they really just thought that agrees. So, but their brains are fucking well. Everybody smaller, starts, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> everybody starts. I'm on that team, but uh, everybody starts trying to find the line for things. You go, where's everybody's like? We're trying to explore where the line is, right? Of like, and then you were like, let's just get rid of the line. But they can't understand that they're uh, they call everything a, a spectrum, but they actually don't understand spectrums. No, because there is like spectrums, but they think it's they it forces them to like look at something like a binary when it actually was yeah, a spectrum yeah, yeah, for exactly. people that yeah, talk yeah, about spectrum true. so much <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. so it's like yes you, i i guess you could say like hey it's too much like uh if a girl fucking doesn't shave for one day it's like a big problem and that's all uh, i'm getting i'm feeling like that i'm getting too much like a little stubble on my fucking legs one day and i'm getting fucking looks from everywhere yeah. which means like every girl should be a hairy disgusting beast mm -hmm. it's like you know what i mean they need to fucking milton jump to conclusions mats what they need <laughs> 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 Good reference, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Luckily, there is such a thing as an invisible hand, and it'll take care of all. Of they need an invisible fucking razor is what they need. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This is the one hill that I'm always willing to die on because it's my least favorite thing is when the girls go with the armpit hair. Yeah. I, even on like a hot chick, I really I doesn't. Agree. I agree. It's not for me, man. Nope. And listen, Danny, more for you. <laughs> not for me either. <laughs> Well, this no, next it was literally like their their basic thing was just like women's beauty standards are too high. Now we're all growing beards. Yeah, my issue is actually I don't like the the aesthetic of the hair. Not, for but me. I like even less the type of person attached to it. It's a great point. Yeah, yep. you go because you know oh, it's yes. a signal, right? And it's it is you, a signal. You know this person sucks. That's such a good point. Sucks this person. Like it's just I hate everything about it because I go I know not only do you have this hair but you also suck. I have Forty thousand followers on that Janu Harry <laughs> movement. Janu Harry. It's an initiative challenging women to put down the razors for the month, challenging them. Yeah, and they're trying to. They're Why? Try, they're basically trying to say it's like they're in Movember. They're like copying Movember, but it's like Movember raises money for cancer. And also, having a mustache isn't disgusting. No, that's true. Some people maybe don't like them. But I guess, yeah, not as bad it's as Easter. But also, more importantly, Movember raises money for like prostate cancer or something. What is their thing? Well, I still wouldn't like this if it was raising money for cancer, that's and true. they're like every girl's being hairy for cancer. I'd say do something else. <laughs> There's a better, you can better do a better uh, thing than that. How about being bald? Yeah, literally, yeah. How about that? Makes Cut off your hair. Makes more sense. Yes. D yeah, run a 5K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? And they also, they're saying, how about this? Let it grow. The January movement is wants to embrace our body hair. Um, despite its name, the message is evergreen. And they want them to put down the razors for the month. How about this, ladies? Um, how about for January? Instead, you put down, instead of putting down the razor for the month, you put down the Arby's for the month. And we have one <laughs> month where yeah. women who weigh a buck 80 in America just fucking, how about you lose 10 pounds for the movement? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, you're gonna. I, I, hey, listen, maybe I'm old fashioned, but health used to mean something. Yeah, I mean, you're you're not gonna get a lot of people on board with you're not the, gonna... <laughs> the lose weight month. <laughs> Like and it's January too. Is January supposed to be kind of the lose weight month? It to is be the lose weight month. I know, but no, they're trying to gain a little hair. Put down the razor for the month. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> unnecessary. I don't know. Whatever. Put down the fork. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you get you gotta think of a good uh good ring to how about it, you though. put down the cnn like how about that ladies put down the put, put down anything honestly yeah but no they're not gonna do it they're just gonna to just trigger i think a lot of normal girls are done with this shit though they're not doing like it. any girls that got a little bit involved with this stuff for uh, most girls i know in real life are pretty much well, off this bullshit. Nah, they're not doing any of this stuff. Well, they know it doesn't work. They're just like, they get a little pat on the back online, but everyone else in real life's like, yeah, I hate this. It's gross. Yeah, no, most of these chicks now are just like, yeah, we're voting for Trump this time. No, 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 not for me. <laughs> Despite done. its name, the message is evergreen. So, so they're saying, well, well, it's January, but also you should always be hairy. You should never shave. And the campaign official's Instagram account, 40,000 followers, Can't posts of image, posts images of women celebrating their body hair year round in a bid to normalize it they it's a literal gross off Norm normalize why do we need to normalize it though i, I hate the idea of normalizing shit it's my normalize least favorite thing is normalizing sucks. things well because you start with fucking body hair and next you're like we need to normalize pedophilia and you go that's how it always goes it does always that's go where you always wind up i'm <laughs> just telling you every you time start the fucking hop on the normalization train danny tried to normalize being five minutes late for this podcast and the next thing you know he's banging a kid in the tunnel <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. I got soot all over my goddamn face. <laughs>
<laughs> blood like, everywhere. Yeah, from not from the ritual. Not from the not, yeah yeah from the ritual of course. <laughs> not from the pedophile. <laughs> I'm not that big. <laughs> <laughs> it's very repetitive people oh and apparently they're complaining in the article that people are trashing the photos online because they're posting like these yeah. photos of really hairy girls and people in the comments are just saying yuck <laughs> i am actually curious we'll never know but remember there was that um there was like a razor ramon ads oh, not razor ramon no uh ads in the subways that everybody was getting all in a huff about because it was like these it was for like razors but yeah it was also just like these gross hairy chicks yeah i do remember i'm curious because that got a lot of uh, I guess like free press but like negative press of people being like this is disgusting all in like New York City subways I am curious if that actually worked out for them though like if they sold less? if they go that act, was like, it a razor company or was it, it was a razor or it was like some sort of I can't imagine it's a good strategy for a razor company to be like everyone put down the razor I know but so they were trying something different I'm curious if that was like you know what all net that actually did work. I mean, out. would that be good for your but business if you were just no, like... No, I mean, I haven't seen no them. No Adrenochrome January. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen them anymore, so I, I would guess maybe not, but who knows. You haven't seen razors anymore? No, 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 that specific, those like gross chick razor company. You're saying the gross chick <laughs> that, that was. Chick I mean, they must have spent fucking $5 million on that. They gross were everywhere, company, all yeah. over like those like giant posters in the New York City subways, everywhere. Like they were on every <laughs> car. Like it was not a cheap... Uh, cheap little campaign so uh, if you're gonna do january at the very least you have to do clean shave in february you can't just go deal. yeah and then the boys go on vacation in january exactly right january becomes the boys vacation yeah. <laughs> everybody like, knows that and you go listen obviously i go like vacation celib on january. january or something like no nut january keep your clothes on january yeah. <laughs> <laughs> separate apartments january something, something like that <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll catch you in that. But Se we're, separate we're, beds, January. Separate beds, January. Might bleed there. into February and we're March getting, and we're, we're February. <laughs> now, it is not that easy to find high quality meat and seafood you can trust. And that's why Butcher Box has solved this problem for you. Fellas, you get incredible deals on premium cuts from Butcher Box. And deals this good are hard to come by mm -hmm. at the grocery store. We know what the normal grocery store looks like. You take the meat, you hold it to your ear, you start shaking it. It doesn't work. No. It's not that you, you poke it. Yeah, and you don't know. You it's know you, sometimes you know. it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you're just looking at the prices to try to guess which one's the good one and which one's the not. Yep. This right here, 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised, crate free, and wild caught seafood. So I've been going through all the different things. Probably less so the seafood is the one I've been ordering. I get a lot of the chicken and a lot of the pork and yeah, the steak. Yeah. For me specifically, I love the steaks. I like the the law. I said it before. I like the lobster. Made some lobster rolls. No, no, you're more of the seafood guy. I've been more of the steak guy. The seafood, I eat it exactly. Oh, oh, you oh. see seafood, you see eat seafood. Yep. <laughs> but I got. I told you, I got it from my dad for Christmas, and he's been on it ever since too. So delivered right to your doorstep, free shipping. Always curated to custom box plans. and It's an incredible value. Variety of high quality meats and an amazing value. The prices on this kind of quality of cuts, you're not going to just find at the grocery store. You're not going to find everywhere. So Butcher Box, give it a try. New members get two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken breast, or two pounds of salmon for free in every order for a whole year. So they are not messing around. Plus, you get 20 bones, $20. 20 greenbacks off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash boyscast. Use the code boyscast to choose your free order and get $20 off. You know, in this new year, the year of the boys, you know, you're not looking to waste time. You're looking to have those meals made quickly, and that's why you want to get started with Factor. Mm -hmm. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning, sets you up for success for the new years. Skip the grocery stores. Skip the prep work. The cooking fatigue. Instead, you get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, plus... 55 weekly add-ons you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions me personally i was on the protein plus and then now i've been going back uh, i've been doing protein plus one week and then i do one of the other ones mm. the other week i like i just like the, the variety and i love the uh the smoothies, the smoothies. oh come on the smoothies are not to be messed around with. man all of the extra stuff like that's really good too yeah yeah but the meals are awesome you just pop them in super easy so i probably do one a day to be completely honest yeah yeah and they have like and they take two minutes it's like honestly yeah. you just put it in the microwave two minutes and it 
actually doesn't like it doesn't taste like a microwave meal it actually tastes like no it's great you cooked stress less over meal times in the new year factors no prep no mess meals free up time that otherwise might be spent doing all this other stuff not only does factor offer fast simple solutions when you're too busy to cook they also help people like myself stay on top of your goals with offerings like the protein plus and keto you can stay on track factor's got everything i need for a week of flavorful nutritious eats so head to factormeals.com slash boyscast50 use the code boyscast50 to get 50% off that is code boyscast50 at factormeals.com slash boyscast50 um, so the Lululemon thing just because it was on this thing it just always makes me laugh because so basically I love this guy he's hilarious right yeah he's funny he's the CEO of Lululemon sold Lululemon for like a pretty good he, amount well, of money he got pushed out though for <clears throat> similar comments but he sold it oh, maybe I'm wrong did he not sell it and then he was still the CEO then he got pushed out but he already oh, sold or it or maybe in that order yeah I don't know if that was the order possibly well he's not okay so he's not involved with Lululemon because he basically started as like a hot chick brand yeah and then He's not involved, but he probably still made tons of money on it. Oh, he's. But I don't think he owns much. shares in it. I'm sure anymore. he owns some shares. Well, but I don't. But he keeps a... tra- he keeps coming out, and every once in a while does a press tour, being like the people that work there now are morons, and they're making they like keep they're basically just like putting disgusting women on there, and no one wants to see that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like it's hilarious thing. Who... It's like a real problem for Lululemon's publicity because they have the founder going around trashing them all the time. Yeah, and I mean, like it is. I think it's a pretty heavily female uh oriented company in terms of like their employees like i think a lot of yeah so obviously they have to the smart move is you got to like dog whistle to the positivity stuff a little bit you know what i mean you give a little like you said a wink you give a little wink to the positivity stuff but like at the end of the day you're not actually trying to sell lululemon i mean he's legitimately like we should not have anything extra large like he's like in that camp. He wants to be a niche company. Uh, the only one. The, yeah, I'm you know what this, though? I'm looking at their stock price, and it's literally at an all time high. Well, right this now. is the problem I think a lot of these companies have, where I do kind of see the problem is you're like, oh, we're only going to so- sell to uh, you know like chicks that aren't fat, and you go, that is a shrinking sliver of the population. Yeah, yeah. But so you do, or you're like, we either sell to fat chicks, or we're not selling. We're s- sell four fucking Lululemon sweatpants. Yeah, but I'm looking at their stock price right now, and it's literally. All time high, but that's what I mean. So I guess so. They it's have hard to. for him to go argue with that because what they're doing is clearly he's working. like you're diminishing my brand, and they're like, yeah, but we're doing pretty good. Yeah, but it's, he is still hilarious, though. It's working what they're doing. So, well, again, how do you not? How do you not? A little bit advertised to the big shit these days when that's the bigger slice of the market no pun intended mm-hmm. bigger slice of the mun uh, the bigger slice of the market big pun intended <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess he just has his principles where i guess he thinks uh you know this is, you're, you're throwing this down the drain well he thinks it's supposed to be like a cool niece brand for hot chicks for he hot built chicks, this yeah and i mean yeah that was the whole thing it makes all these girls asses look good exactly yeah but but it can't make you know mashed potato ass you can only make it look a certain <laughs> way Right, I mean, you can do a lot with. He doesn't. Want, he doesn't want these penguin ass looking motherfuckers. He's done a lot for mashed potato ass, though. <laughs> he did it okay. More than it. arguably any man in history. True. So there's this woman on TikTok, and basically, she's her whole thing is she says uh, blue collar works not very hard. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Sort of on our team, she goes, "Women who love doing blue collar work says men are lying and labor jobs are not hard." And she says men are talking shit, and they're what saying does she do. Well, the thing is, she's 100 pounds, right? So it's like, oh. she's basically saying, the construction site, everyone says it's so hard. I've just been holding this sign all day, and it's like oh. super easy. <laughs> oh, she's a sign holder. No, I'm just a, extrapolating, yeah. but it's like, the, to some degree, it's like when a small little girl's like, I've been, I've been working on the site all day, and it's not as hard as everyone says. It's like, well, yeah, you're probably <laughs> holding the nails. Hey, you're not doing anything. Like, obviously, the answer is, but there's all these articles about her being like, the, uh, men are, it's kind of saying men are whiny, because men like say their job's so hard when yeah. they work at a hard job. And she's kind of like, I've been working blue collar jobs and they're easy. And it's like, well, yeah, but when you're like a decent looking hundred pound girls, you're probably not getting the fucking, you no, know, hell no. You're not getting the punishment jobs. No, you're not. Just hell, you get the sign holding. Yeah. She goes, she men are overreacting to blue collar labor. 
Um, I mean, if you're in the union, it can be easy, man. You fucking just get that smoke smart. Oh man, I was at uh, the show I did on New Year's Eve. The guy who was who was running it was complaining because it's like one of those you, you've probably dealt with it, but like the, it's this theater and it was like a union theater. I hate that so, shit. You know, I've told yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So there's four union people. They make like you know eighty bucks an hour. They have to show. There's four of them. They have to show up. They're like it has to be three hours before, three hours after. Oh, like, you want Doritos, for, Danny? We're gonna need the Dorito for guy like, for like load in and load out or whatever. And they literally come in, they plug a microphone in, set it up on the stand, go like tap it, you know, tap it twice or whatever. And they go, and there's no sound check or anything like that. And they just tap it. And then they just, they have a folding table at the side of the stage and they just like sit there. Ask one of those guys to do something that's not in their job description and watch him have a mental breakdown. But it's also crazy because you're like, they're, they're getting paid for like seven hours of work or some seven and a half hours. Oh, the union like men are cooking. Four of them, seven and a half hours, 80 bucks a pop. I'm sure we have some union men listen to the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, they know, fine. you know, you got I mean, a good deal. Grips, grips, listen, you got it. You know, you got a good deal. Of course, you know you got a good deal, and I will say I'm sure like, I'm a union man too. I always forget that. Yeah, yeah. With, oh, yeah, yeah. With the extra, uh, extra. I always forget that when I'm talking about union men that I am currently a union man. I actually put mine on hold though. I actually don't. I didn't put mine on hold because I still get residuals for some stuff, and they basically equal out. To be honest, it's basically my residuals equal out to what my membership costs every I year. So it's basically like, a wash. But yeah, I just was getting a million <laughs> emails from them. And I'm like, I'm just putting. Mine I have on this hold. one commercial that I did where I played a drummer, and it's a Christmas commercial, and every Christmas they play oh, it. I get like another 500 bucks yeah, or something. Well, then that's fine. <laughs> yeah, so I end up getting like 100 bucks a year or yeah, something, right. so I don't cancel my membership. Yeah, yeah they keep you a lot. <laughs> But I mean, I'm sure they do have the union stuff where, like, you know, for those theaters where they have to do some crazy nutcracker thing, and they actually are working really hard, and there's a million moving parts. But then this is like their plum gig, and but the the, the comedy, gig. but the guy who's the producer, he's like, well, I don't do any fucking of those things. I just do this, and I just watch you guys sitting there. My thing that just always makes me mad is the rules where they're, oh, you're doing this, you can't do this other thing. Yeah. it's like the you know the a lot of times like that. It's probably like on, uh, I mean, construction stuff, anything where it's like heavy machinery is operated. I'm like fine, right? But when and they're just like, hey, do you mind get a merch table? You're like, oh, we're gonna need the guy who carries the tables. Listen, I've For done sure. this. I've done this bit forty times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. And I get the, the need for unions because it's like when they're for certain industries where they don't have them, then they end up treating them super shitty. So then this is like an overcorrection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some the good things about yeah, unions, yeah, some yeah. bad things some about girl, unions. Yeah, yeah. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. Guys, guys, guys. Guys, guys, guys. The bottom line is this girl uh, who's saying work is so hard, probably not getting the hardest jobs. No. Correct. However, correct mundo. We have a couple of things here. Yep. There's there's a man one and a woman one. So the first one, and we always like when priests are getting out of hand. <laughs> priests be wildin'. We like it when priests are being wildin'. I I couldn't find out. I wonder. Uh, go ahead. Mid Missouri priest found guilty of soliciting sex from an adult during confession. By the way, I don't know why it's important that he's mid, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's just kind of also they did editorial. Also it. funny they just specify that as an adult. Yeah, <laughs> just like it's such a problem they have yeah. to mention like from an adult from an adult during <laughs> confession. The chick or guy you think has to be a guy. They don't say that's the one thing. I was the Deutsches of Jefferson City. You think no girls can't do confession, retard? Really. Buddy, I have a joke about it. I don't know girls can't do confessions. Yes, because even God knows that no woman can handle that <laughs> level of gossip. I uh, got him. You'd be in your confession booth being like, is my priest texting right now? That's, That's Catholic, anyway. I don't know that. I don't know. Some of the other ones might have confession, but it's Catholics that do the confession, and you can't be a priest if you're a girl. No, 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 no. Not the priest. I'm saying the priest is the guy, is the the confessor. Can be a, Can be a woman or no? Yes, confessors can be a woman. That's what I'm saying. Is he banging a chick? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I don't think he's a chick. I love how quickly you believe that girls can't go to confession then. That, well, I don't know. I'm Jewish. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty sick, actually. <laughs> Fucking even uh, Catholicism is like, yeah, we're not letting this Do they have any version? Not, you don't even yapping to God, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough time Are you on asking the if we have a version of confession? <laughs> Ladies, come on. Are you asking if we have a version of confession? Yeah, yeah it's a 900 number. It's fucking four ninety nine a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Some people do the trick where they do the old collect call thing where they go. I'm going Jewish for the jokes, man. Honestly, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm fucking, I'm converting next year, well, man. Jewish for the jokes is the move. 
<laughs> well, Tim Watley. Honestly, when the, the Jew tunnel thing happened, I saw Danny making his video. I was just fucking <laughs> looking in the mirror, like, look at you fucking Anglican fuck. You're worthless, man. <laughs> I call I call my dad. I go, what are you doing, pal? What is this yeah, shit? They, you never had one chance to get in. <laughs> you didn't have one shot. I gotta marry a fucking Jewish girl and convert and act like it's for that, yeah, man. Yeah. And then I come back on stage. I go, hey, can I get this uh, mic turned up a schmeckle here? I'm gonna go right up, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Watley, full on. Well, as someone who's marrying a Jewish girl, I can tell you, uh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> 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 oh shit yeah so <laughs> do you okay so the jews confession do you actually have a confession of no, any sort of that no, no, no. i no, mean it's not even not not every, every christian well, none no. of the jews have done anything wrong i guess <laughs> in their religion <laughs> <laughs> not nothing even, to confess about we all, I always wonder why it is only Catholics though like Christian like not even regular like regular Christians don't have confession right it's no it's a Catholic, Catholic thing yeah but it is hilarious though that the pre the, I mean it's I, I see what you're saying where you're well, going that's he anyways, asking that's the my dude. question was he smashing a chick or or is he doing a I think if thing? it was a dude they would have mentioned a dude in my opinion okay I I Agree, I think. Yeah, I think they would have fucking mentioned. Okay, so he smashed. They, they would have said so they, probably the. Uh, uh, my guess would be the article would be homo priest. <laughs> right, right, homosexual priest. They would they would have probably said something like that. Yeah, or is like, local local homo priest or is homosexual like at this point in the game like that's just understood. Oh, I see what you're like, saying. You don't even <laughs> like we need to say. Obviously, he was looking for a dude. I think I don't. I, I'm thinking a girl. Okay. But you're right. It didn't include that. They didn't include who he banged. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. I, I'll agree with you, though. The digester of Jefferson City received a report. Father Medina solicited sex during confession. So, basically, kind of how it worked was the girls kind of saying, like, listen, I've lied on my test. And he was like, you've been a bad little girl, haven't you? A little girl. <laughs> little trollop. You're a fucking dirty girl, man. Let me wash you fucking clean. You know, why don't we get some extra girl? You so bad, you're going to have to come to my place and do... Mm -hmm. We're going to have to turn this confession to 11. Why don't you so fucking Pope Medina some fucking titties father. right there? Father, no. Yeah, call me father. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Call me father. Is that what they call him? Father. Right? Yeah, you want what you call me father. Yeah. <clears throat> Something like that. It's crazy he didn't get fired either. They just, they just moved him around. They, they, yeah, that's their slap move, on the right? wrist. Catholic Church, they just go, yeah, we'll just. Catholic Church doesn't know. like to fire them, man. Nah. They're union. It's like the union. Yeah, it is like the union. They're like, <laughs> it's the ultimate union. They just. It is the ultimate union, man. <laughs> Good luck union. firing these guys. They gotta do a lot. Yeah. I have sinned. I've been covering another man. Cover this dick. How about that? You covered this fucking. Now does dick. like is there a scenario? Because I got one. I got one. Yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know how you're gonna repent? I need you to do 25 suck Gary's. <laughs> His <laughs> name's <is> Gary. <laughs> like, you know, I, I've, I've only seen this on television. I've never seen one in person. Uh, actually, maybe I have seen a confession. A woman? No. A vagina? A, a, a confession booth in person. I think I maybe have somewhere in, like, I've seen a confession Italy booth. or something. In, like, one of those, like, f you know, the churches. Famous you just churches. go to other religions like, churches literally to laugh at them. Oh! No, like, literally, like, this. <laughs> no, like the Sistine Chapel or something. But, uh,. I think there were confession booths in the Sistine Chapel, but I don't know. But I wonder if he just like does he? Because I know it's like this mesh grate kind of thing. Yeah. Whatever, like does does he just like he just like kind of cut a hole in like is the, <laughs> like is she just like father? And he goes closer, closer. I can't, he's like I can't hear you. Closer, and then she's like, and just the dick comes through. There we go. I wonder. <laughs> Glory. I confession. mean, dude, there's no hotter, probably like like just wrong sex than in a fucking confession. And you were confessing to cheating too. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Money. Money right there. He show goes, show me goes, exactly goes, what you did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's also like, look, you're already cheated. He's like, I'm gonna absolve it. He goes, yeah, he's That's what he said. One. He goes, I'm gonna uh, you know what? The father, uh, I have just spoken to him, and I'm going to absolve you of your sin and also your sin of having sex with the priest. She goes, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to absolve you of sucking off the priest in the confessional booth. But I never. Whoop. Yeah, that'd be a good. Uh, Flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> So then this was going on, and then there's a teacher, well, another well, one. Malarkey in Missouri. Dude, the teachers are malarkey right now. Malarkey Central. Buddy, oh, you know what my buddy just sent me that I forgot to tell you? What? Hold on. Uh, the New York Post. Um, 
<laughs> okay, ready for the New York Post headline on the uh, the Jews in the tunnels? Yeah. Survey: Chabad boys spark <laughs> spark whole e war by di- <laughs> by digging tunnels. Chabad boys. Chabad boys spoke spark whole uh, e war. That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that good shit? That's good shit. <laughs> so this teacher, and by the way, this has been obviously the theme of the last little bit that a lot of these teachers have been smashing students right yeah and she got slapped with charges after having sex with a teen while using the other students as lookouts yep and the boy's dad busted for allowing the relationship he got arrested too because he knew about it the dad of the she's boy crazy too she's 25 the dad was just like well way to go son. yeah yeah, yeah smash the teacher yeah, dad's a little jealous probably she's like a little she's a little cutie too she, even though she's got two kids and how uh, old were these kids 16 kids 16 she's 25 my 16 year old son smashed she got the teacher. Divor- She's 25. Uh, She has two kids. Divorced. She recently got divorced because uh, she divorced her husband because all he wanted... This is like in the article. It says all he wanted to do was butt stuff. So he only wanted to do butt stuff. So then she divorced him over it. Which is... (laughs) Start smashing students? So then then she just started fucking... The lookout? Smashing students. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I, and then I, one of the students snitched. That's what happens. And but by it's the way, only statutory rape because I guess it depends on the state. But it's technically just because she's the teacher. You know what's interesting? would be illegal otherwise. I don't think. Oh, because sixteen's legal I there. Think that's yeah. <clears throat> well, a dude, lot. If you're sixteen. You're smashing a twenty-five year old. Like, that's awesome. And you're a dude. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, obviously, this conversation happens a, a lot. million times. And then I there's know. a lot. No, but I'm saying there's obviously tons of people that come out. Even when we ma- we'll make jokes about it, and people will be like, "Oh, actually, that's assault." And you're like, "I know. I don't think you're going to change my mind. Of, it's, uh, it make me think that if a 16 year old bangs an older person, it's like the biggest deal. You're not going to really change my mind. You'll on that. never change my mind. Yeah, it's like not I, at 16. I, I Maybe when, when you go with someone's like, "Oh, he was 12." Obviously, go, yeah, that's fucking. That's pretty fucked up. But some people are like, some of these 16 year olds have fucking beards. You go, yeah, you're yeah, a kid. Yeah. You're a dude with a beard and you've smashed them all their girls like there's no way you're gonna convince me that this exactly. guy's a victim exactly yeah, yeah yeah you go but, yeah it's illegal and you got to make laws and it's probably bad for her but it's probably bad for her to do maybe on her end you could say that but on the guy's end like if that guy if one of my buddies was 16 and then started like crying like oh i've i was like assaulted i'd be yeah, like yeah. All, all right pal uh, sure yeah, there's no yeah. way my buddy would be getting a sympathy for me on that it's like yeah you're not gonna change my mind on that yeah you think she has to do like the whole when she moves to a new place and she's gotta go like door to door to be like I'm a sex yes I think so yeah they do yeah and then everybody's like you god damn well then call me <laughs> 16 <laughs> well uh funny I've been th- looking for some <laughs> tutoring funny funny thing about me is I'm uh 15 <laughs> years old <laughs> God damn. I actually just got my uh, a little bit of a facelift, so I guess you could call me 15. This chick probably goes like to tell some dude like in her like apartment building, she goes, I'm uh just letting you know I'm moving in, I'm a registered sex offender, and the guy goes, uh, okay, and then she closes the door and there's just so many guys just go instantly go crank one. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> crank one. <laughs> Crank's good, by the way. I don't. Really, I, I feel like I had that in my vocabulary. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking be adding that. <laughs> Crank's definitely gonna be adding to the vocabulary. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so, you know, what we should uh, just briefly mention because obviously we've been talking about the DEI stuff and it's been this whole thing and Claudine Gay was fired and so Elon Musk and Mark Cuban are like having at it big yeah. time right uh-huh. and it was interesting because Mark Cuban's like totally lying yeah because he, he he's taking the side that like DEI is great and everyone there's zero problems with it and there it's it's coming out related to uh, their arguments over like pilots and stuff cause yeah like it's, even if he said like even if Mark Cuban said like hey obviously there's some negatives but I still think it's uh, this is what's needed to outweigh the injustices like I, I don't like that's a coherent uh, like whether you agree or disagree that isn't a coherent argument yeah but to just say like all of the stuff everyone says is like lies uh-huh. it, you're well you're you're just uh, you're uh, just being politically correct right yeah but Bill Ackman in the whole Claudine Gay thing I thought was so like he's kind of some of these like billionaire guys when pushed become like because they're so fearless because they have so much fuck you money I think right uh yeah I, and I mean he just he basically it was like the Israel thing which is so funny because you're like this is just his his thing where then he you know because of all the Claudine Gay stuff and then because the Israel stuff and then obviously like the she all the college professors and then 
he was like started to go look into plagiarism he's like i'm gonna go find well, that's what, I'll, I'll just say what yeah. happened because you're explaining a little wishy-washy like because it's almost like they've awakened the beast with some of these guys right mm -hmm. and obviously the yeah they were ignoring all this stuff for five years and then the israel stuff opened their eyes to it but basically what happened was he started saying the claudine gay stuff and saying she plagiarized or whatever and then the the press business well, I don't basically know, the press, business insider how is business insider not the press they're fucking tabloid you're saying like, yeah I don't well know. They're, they're all they're, fucking tabloids right but they're now. even worse the business insider is like if you ever go straight to, up no but business insider is so if you ever go to like a uh, product or like uh you know um like whatever any sort of like product and it'll be like covered in business insider they'll use that as like a thing and you're saying that's a joke no 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 you can literally pay business insider like <clears throat> you like they have a system where you can just pay them and they'll give you a coverage of your thing and but it's like pay for play like it's not an honest thing like it's a scam that's a scam and it's run by Henry Blodgett who famously uh, is not allowed to trade securities because he, he committed like securities fraud like he's a fucking crook they had all the stuff with Portnoy they're just like they're, even for like blogs they're, okay they're trash I see what you're saying yeah. well it was interesting to me that th they weren't the first people to come after Bill Ackman so it wasn't just Business Insider but this big in they came after his wife yes yeah, so Business Insider after Bill Ackman like threw his hat in the ring basically on this Claudine Gay stuff started saying like they we found some uh, thing where we think your wife plagiarized and then he goes he goes hey I just paid for personally an entire audit of everyone's yeah, essays yeah, yeah, to see yeah, who we're, plagiarized yeah, we're gonna be, uh, yeah, and, we'll, yeah. and then we'll see what's what and it was like it is like very few people have the like kind of capital to just be like, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll just put like a, like five million dollars behind just like a big expose to, to just audit your entire business. He wants to make an AI thing, and it's all like the Peter Thiel, Hulk Hogan shit again. Yeah, he made an AI thing to essentially, uh, or he wants to make an AI that can just go through everything and then match it up against plagiarism, which you think would already exist. But when journalists were like taking down actors and comedians and mm. musicians or whatever, it's like. A lot of these people didn't have like the resources when they started like picking fights with billionaires. It's yeah, kind of yeah. like not working out for them, sort of. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. And then and even with the plagiarism thing, because they were like he charged her with plagiarism, his wife, and then, uh, but then they were saying that she lifted like Wikipedia things. But then he found out where he's like, well, when she wrote them, like you didn't have to source Wikipedia, and like it's just because, you know, I guess the chain. I don't know. The whole thing is fucking insane. But well, the. So just because we've talked, this is different from the Cuban. Thing. This has been sort of an episode where we talk about comedy a bit because mm -hmm. there was a very comedy specific uh, uh, news cycle. Yeah, but so the Chappelle and Gervais, which again, I wasn't the biggest fan of those specials, but I both I think I they're both super seen, funny or whatever. Um, basically, uh, this girl Catherine randonk who's mm -hmm. like a writer for vulture and vulture basically is all the you know it's they like, like business all... insider for girls <laughs> kind of yeah so she does she did this thing she goes 11 signs you're watching an edgy comedy special and a lot of people were kind of sharing it being like see i said this is what edgy comedy sucks and they're kind of basically talking about gervais and and yeah. and chappelle in this context so if you want to know the type of person she is like her last four articles were like gary goldman maria bamford and berbigula were all yeah, the best thing that's what she likes so it was interesting because because she basically did so I wanted to go through and be like if which ones we do okay and just be like so they have 11 signs you're watching an edgy comedy special see if we do any of this stuff right yeah and the funny part was too which she says because she was kind of like she goes here's 11 things that all that type of person will do and I think that some of me and you have probably made some of the same criticisms yeah but the funny part with people like this you go um, it's that old thing where you go just because you can see someone's formula doesn't always know it's bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, we don't. I'm, this doesn't really describe us, but um, when you watch, if you go all those people she likes, it's like you can also call out all of the moves. Yeah, that, yeah like of you course. Go, every you go, t t you know, like you're watching a self depreciating woke special or whatever. It's like they all do the same moves. It's yeah. like they're gonna have a bit about depression. Like you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. They're gonna get serious. They're gonna get serious. You know? Yeah. They're gonna maybe lip bottom lips gonna quiver a little bit. They're gonna talk about their parents. You know, yeah, and how they needed their approval. They were raped. How they're still improving as a person. You know, yeah, they're still trying. You know, even I sometimes. I mean, literally slip seeing, up. seeing their therapist. How, how many times have you heard this from that type of comic? You know my. Spouse is amazing, but <laughs> <laughs> they call him their partner. How many? Okay, I'll tell you this. You can almost guarantee there's going to be a joke that says at some point where they go, 
Listen, if I was mentally sound, I wouldn't be up here doing this. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, if yeah, my yeah. parents loved me, I wouldn't be doing I wouldn't be in front of you doing stand up. So obviously every genre I mean, has its things, yeah. but she was trying to do this as a hit, so I just wanted to say that and first. Some of this is kind of revisionist too, because like to say uh, you know, knee slapping. Well, the knee slapping is that is a funny one actually, because you're like, there's only one pretty type one of, guy does that. There's one, one guy, type of comedian, or one type of comedian who does that. Not a ton of white guys doing the knee slap. Not a ton of black women doing the knee slap. It's <laughs> really specific type of guy <laughs> yeah. doing that. Uh, I don't know. If Which I'm, one were you saying is revisionist though? Like with the um, like she goes, oh, like you know, call because for example, Joe wrote calling the it's number one comedy special titles welcome or presupposes audience disapproval, and you're like the triggered thing. And that was like, a, four years ago. People yeah, that was four that. years ago, and and then and you're also like uh, like the triggered thing sucks for Joe Rogan because he was the first person to call it. He that. was the first person to call and it, it that. aged like super Didn't badly. Age great. <laughs> and lots of comedy doesn't though. That, no, that is a kind of hallmark of comedy, and that it does age pretty poor that's another good point that a lot of her things were like yeah you're right this was like five years ago yeah if it came out today yeah i agree yeah but it didn't come out okay what was your special called again international jew the international jew mine was nanette too yeah <laughs> and then i had nanette too white immigrant and ryan in toronto that's fine so i don't have any edgy i don't have an edgy title no, no edgy title i mean international jew i guess if you didn't like me you could say that's edgy i don't think it is international no no, no but she's saying the edgy but titles yeah, yeah, are like all the triggered that. like oh yeah f- infamous censor this i'm sorry <laughs> you feel that i guess way. i more do that shit ironically and this is kind of what yeah, i was we saying made fun the, of the stuff the caution tape and but the i was thinking that's the thing though we're a little too like i think it's a canadian thing because she's describing a very specific american brand of like edgy comedy and i think the like british and canadians a little more like we're hipstery. also aware though of like that but that's hipster though like that there, there is like that self-awareness is a little more of like a not american yeah yeah, that's true. In my opinion. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm aware of the things that are kind of like eye rolls a bit. And you're like... Well, that's you're saying 80s shit, right? The no, caution but like, tape. She, yeah, the caution tape. And you're like, but we know people who are like, there's, we haven't reached the end of caution tape on comedy albums. I think like, even, yeah, Bill Hicks at the time probably wasn't as much this, but it's like wearing the like long leather jacket with the cigarettes. Yeah, definitely course. like... Coming out to voodoo child. I mean, once like, Simpsons had Krusty be that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Visual indications of success combined with other aesthetic signals of authenticity. So they're saying camera angles that emphasize the size of the venue, POV shots from the comedian's perspective entering the stage to capture overwhelming adoration, but at the same time, there are deliberate postures towards being authentic. Uh, some Th- of the signals, most- wearing a black t-shirt, smoking on stage, stripped down bare bones set, sitting on a stool. This is kind this of is pushing nonsense. it. This is not. This one's really nonsense because you're like, okay, a lot of con- I mean I wear a black t-shirt I don't know also a lot of c- famous comedians yeah they film their specials in a giant theater yeah so what, are you wearing a t- bla- wearing a black t-shirt she's saying Ricky Gervais this, they're literally just saying the Ricky Gervais special she goes well, wearing Louis a black CK wears a black t-shirt yeah but it's like know. so you're saying he wears, wears suiters like what should he wear I mean, comedians I, like to wear the the light bomber jacket. That was the outfit for a minute. The bomber jacket, but if you the out, to, out the white the the light bomber jacket for a minute was the outfit of the guy that probably had bad style that a stylist put him in that. I guess I don't know. I'm looking at here's. Uh, I can picture Danny get a stylist putting him in the fucking light bomb. bomber. Here's a uh, <laughs> Berbiglia photo and uh, from her articles and Gary Gallman and they're wearing blue button up shirts. I guess. Oh, so they want you to wear the they want you to wear the blogger blue, button up. I guess button ups. That's so, so they're saying the blogger button up does it in this. Yeah. But then like Has anyone done a special where they're vaping? <laughs> Uh, probably not. I don't know, but yeah, she doesn't like that. Would be an edgy move. Smoking <laughs> on stage is specific. Every fucking punchline, you blow a cloud. <laughs> no, if you could blow O's, and every time you, <laughs> you do an edgy joke, and then you blow O. <laughs> and then she doesn't like a bare bone set. Bare bone set's bad, but then she also doesn't like a big theater. You're like, what do you want? I don't. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, yeah. she basically you know what she did is she watched Ricky Gervais yeah, watched- and David Chappelle's special, and she just took notes of things they do, yeah. and then she wrote them as like her list, I guess. Yeah. Opening joke aiming for deliberate blunt force provocation. Um. I don't know if I have that. And the, here the punchline trend. I do start my new set with Jews, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, start a pack of subjects of a punchline. Trans people, disabled people, wokeness, domestic violence, violence against women, rape. So she's just No, you do. Uh, you started, I uh, remember your new set that you're doing, you start with black is whack. Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> have a seat. <laughs> oh, you're sitting already? Good. <laughs> uh, you do, though. You start your set and you come out and you'd be like... 
you go immigrants got it too good and then you sit down and then you light the cigarette while they're immigrants while they're got clapping. it too good <laughs> while they're clapping then you light your smoke <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Illegal. Like, yeah, I don't know. Within the first five minutes, the comedian uses any of the... <laughs> first five minutes? Yeah, you're like, that's a lot. Uses any of the starting pack as a punchline. So they go, if you... In the first five minutes, if you talk about trans people, disabled people, domestic violence, violence against women, rape, historical topics, racial identity, legal mm. immigration, liberals... Liberals? Uh, uh, none of these categories are blah, blah, distinguish... In I the mean, first do, five I, minutes, I, I if you mention joke, race, my, I do have an opener that says, "So liberal women getting raped are retarded." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of bang out a few. That's of that's true. <laughs> that's true. Very true. An insistence there will be jokes about no more. There will be no more jokes about an off-limit topic, followed by a pivot joke. That's about specifically a just. Literally Dave Chappelle. That's one very uh, specific thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's trying to use the language. She goes, followed by a pivot joke about a marginalized group, and it was like, you mean Dave Chappelle about trans people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're specifically talking about one thing. I actually don't like it that much, though. When I actually don't love it, the... the I promised I wouldn't joke about this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I didn't really like Especially that. Especially when either. it's carries and he kept on saying, from special to special. Ricky Gervais kept saying his wife told him he couldn't talk about this. It just, yeah, yeah it's you not don't my like, favorite Yeah, thing. you don't like the, the, that you can't talk about a thing is you're like, yeah, but you you just, you got that, you get to say that once, which you said three specials ago. Yeah, I don't really You can't keep it. saying I'm not allowed to talk about stuff and then continue to talk about stuff because everybody goes, but you are talking about it, so then. Yeah, we agree with that yeah, one. Yeah, we agree on that Physical one. gestures of hilarity that accompany a joke. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, <laughs> what's this chick's name? What's this chick's name? Uh, what's her What's her name? Catherine Van Arendock. Your anti-blackness is showing. Thank Catherine. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very. Oh, I'm sorry. That what white guy has a version of that? <laughs> Danny, you have the one where you tip the yarmulke after every fucking. <laughs> and you go. It's spring loaded. It's on a spring like a jack in the box, and I go. Ooh, and then it springs, boing, and it just goes back and forth. I'm sorry, triggered. <laughs> what do you What do you think about uh for a sketch? Like it's like a doctor and he treats. And you, know, you always uh, say you he, go, he treats, and that's the bottom line because Polis Chuck said so. so. <laughs> uh, what do you think about a sketch? A, a doctor who treats uh, microphone knee. He's like a microphone knee specialist because all these black <laughs> comics. Are Yo, in, that's they have, hilarious. They have microphone knee. And I like, love it. Yeah, they're all like just bruised. It's knees. really fun. But you can't see the bruise, I guess. Well, you just and then uh, I mean, you. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, but they just have like, <laughs> like yeah, so like just fix their knees. That's really best, funny. Best in the game. They all just have on the right knee. <laughs> just, like all <laughs> just the right knee. Because it's not just him. A lot of comedians do the knee slap. Of, yeah, yeah. But the problem is, then you need to get black people, and they're like, we're not gonna betray our race like this for your little sketch. Well, ones that don't do knee slaps, <laughs> mate. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they probably a lot of them. Yeah, because they probably don't, they like, probably don't like it. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> the knee slap. He's <laughs> like the specialist it's like that fucking andrews dude who's like the oh that's another one i did a video about it uh every special that you can will have one of the uh oh i'm sorry branded Bra yeah, you know yeah, like yeah, a white yeah. name yeah, white name yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> knee slapping convenience is pretty good <laughs> what would the white version be you go, <laughs> you go it's something 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 you flick you flick it sort yeah, of like flick it or something yeah <laughs> Yeah, so that's a very, very specific thing that she's making. I've never seen this whole swinging. article is just that she didn't like Dave Chappelle. Or Ricky she Gavis says swinging specials. the microphone around. I don't know if I've ever seen that. <laughs> you after uh, like uh, maybe Dave Chappelle. Like after you do a thing, you do a swing. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I don't. I can't think of if I've ever seen that. You trans people. Maybe to me, more. I'm looking at a dude in a dress. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is if you do a hel Lasso. helicoptering your your dick. Like if you do a act out of helicopter helicopter in your dick, dick, and then you use the. Yeah, do you do that? No, I'm just. I'm only <laughs> thinking. Of, I'm only thinking of the scenario where that might even like uh, show itself, where you're spinning the. I can't think of any reason. Because you why wouldn't do like, oh, I was on a helicopter. Because <laughs> then you're like, the fucking mic might fly off, so you're not gonna do that. <laughs> Sometimes I drop the mic. Like on purpose? But like as a bit. Oh yeah. One actually not sometimes, it's one bit. Oh, okay. But I drop the bit because I'm so uh I go, come on, and I drop it. Yeah, that's whatever. That's not swinging it around though. I'm just wondering. I don't swing around the mic. <laughs> I'm wondering what specifically what is she referencing? Well, I, you know what I do. After every joke, I take a sip of water and do the triple H. You know that. <laughs> Everybody knows that about me. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
physical gestures of hilarious direct references to previous backlash i don't think either of us are popular to ever do that anyway no, 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 I've, anytime i've even tried i don't think it'll ever you have be my to be style. a literal national news story yeah exactly so you're like that's fine. but even then i've seen like people we know like you know, like maybe like a Namesh Patel or someone like that, they'll talk about because they had a big news story. Yeah. And they'll sort of, you have to just like, you tell people and it, it always comes across. I feel like everyone kind of like tries it and then stops doing it because you feel kind of like, you almost because a lot of people don't know and you have to explain to them yeah, it's, once you it's almost like it, saying yeah, like yeah. so I'm famous right and, yeah, I know. and then people are like you know what I mean you, it has to be so big that there's not a chance that they don't know it exactly yeah like a Chris Rock slap or a Z Sensari thing or something so they're talking about yeah they're talking about two people two people but like who who I get it you don't who that's that famous like so Pete Davidson had a big controversy and he mentioned it like is he, is he an edgy comic now Maybe joke specifically about a word comedians are not allowed to say anymore. Well, I, a lot of people have that. Yeah. To be honest, I found like the edgy thing. It's gone the other way. Where I find that like at the seller, I find that's more comics that like kind of were on the PC thing more because I feel like people that are somewhat edgy just just say it now. Yeah, yeah. They just sort of like no one's. Re- it's only the N word that you're not that people won't say. But no one's gonna have a bit about like. See, back in the day, we used to, back back in the day, we used to be able to say the N word. Now, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. more like what usually it was retard for a while that people. But I'm like, but I don't really have those bits because they still say the words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like, look, look. There's one word we can't say. <laughs> they raise a lot of people have like you're not supposed to say this, but I guess we don't fall in the category because yeah, we still not, say all the words. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm not gonna say the N word on stage. I, I, we say all the words. Then I slap the mic. I like, I helicopter to the mic. <laughs> that would be a funny scene. My triple A. If you can do everything in like five minutes, like the five, like the, the, yeah, like all eleven of these in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. You like slap the slap the mic, spin the thing, sit on the chair. Kevin Costa, if you guys have seen this, he used to do these videos. He does the podcast really with funny. Ben. Yeah, Lemon Party. Um, Lemon Party. But he used to do these videos where he did the blank comic and did like the LA comic, yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the PC comic, the edgy comic. And those were like the funniest oh, yeah, things he, ever. Yeah, super funny. Yeah. That was like my favorite. He did the, the LA comic. He's like, uh, he goes, uh, if my Uber driver comes, it's like DJ. No, a guy named DJ. Like he has, I, I, I'm not yeah, even yeah. doing it right, but he just had like the cadence down so yeah, much. Yeah, but it was all yeah, the cool, yeah. the I cool that. comic. That was like during COVID. I think he put that. Yeah, I now. think so. But they were like really funny. Um, jokes specifically about a word, a joke setup, or a story about a straw man audience member from a previous show who enjoyed. That being does a happen a though. Show. I don't actually love that myself. But either. that does happen though, where sometimes like someone will say something and then like at a show during a bit and. And kind of work their way yeah i but know she's everyone does making, it she's saying you're, they're making it up though. i don't think if it's an edgy thing though it's i don't a, think it's an edgy thing but she's also saying that they're oh making, uh, oh uh, sorry she's i missed your that point yeah, making okay. it up gotcha she says straw man you're straw right man. she's saying that's made up that that never actually no, happened. sometimes it's true right i'm not you know so i d- agree with you and disagree with her there yeah but i also my own opinion is that i don't love when people say a joke and they go i just told that joke and then someone came up to me and said this i'm always just like just say that anyway you don't have like right, you, yeah, yeah, i yeah. always think it's unnecessary yeah i've done that before I did that with one joke uh, Not that I do currently You do that And you go I was doing this joke before And then someone came up to me And said You Jew rat bastard And I said Jew rat bastard Jew rat bastard <laughs> I may be a Jew And I may be a rat But <laughs> yeah, It's all like There's a lot Yeah Stole that from the Simpsons Um Oh, that's from Simpsons? Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, audience begins clapping or cheering during a premise about an offensive... T- well, now she's talking about the audience. It's yeah. like, I don't know. They don't control the audience. <laughs> At least one joke. But that being said... No, I- she doesn't like clap to her, but only I- when it's an offensive ah! topic. Yeah, when it's... So I had an abortion... She likes clapter. She just doesn't like clapter the other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she doesn't like it for the things she doesn't like. I'm sure she liked clapter when Tignataro was taking off her shirt to yeah, show her yeah, cancer. Ex- yeah, exactly. At least one joke about a thing comedians swore they were not going to joke about anymore. No, she already said that. By the one. way, with the Tig Notaro thing, I just realized that it's crazy that she was the only comedian with a double mastectomy for like two years, and now there's 10. Well, there's tons now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> She was like, yeah, I'm the comedian with the double mastectomy. And you go, yeah, you're not the only one anymore. Welcome to 2020. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's like tons now. A moment of sincerity near the end of the special, usually couched as a life lesson or gesture. Honestly, I'm not even saying... I'm not trying to say we're better than this, like because I want I don't want to come across that way. I'm just saying we 
are we think we're too cool i think it's a canadian and a british thing though because this really i know ricky gervais is that but i i feel like yeah like but no also, no one we know does this stuff the moment of sincerity i feel like in america it's like they all do that they all kind of like get real and like have yeah. a moment with the audience but i feel like none of our friends do that because i, I mean, think it's I, like an american thing yeah maybe i feel like you have to be an older comic like a younger moment of sincerity thing well it's gross uh, yeah, to me that's just we don't me. like that i don't know it's just not our style yeah, I don't, I don't know, like, but that is again not an edgy thing that is a such across the board the thing that comics do is get real it's just the difference is she's saying they get real about uh you know these are just jokes or whatever and you know something like that yeah. you know we all need to get, come together as humans which is like but the other side of it is get together is like but honestly i'm worried about the future and we need to yeah, or yeah, yeah. but honestly like you know depression's real and we need to stick together and honestly if you if you ever see someone here's the suicide hotline you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah yeah but seriously like they all get they all get they all get which uh, is i you know what from like a crowd control pacing thing like where you're trying to like you know the highs and then you're trying to maybe like bring it back down for a low because you have like a really high thing you know what i mean i feel just i feel i don't, so I don't like it either but, I, do but it. I get it like i get how they're like you could see how they're i'm not even saying i hate it it just doesn't work, for me. Yeah, it doesn't work for me dude yeah. if i ever saw you do that i would Fuck be like it, what are you no doing buddy way I go, <laughs> yeah but seriously though anti-semitism is really a serious <laughs> But seriously though just for my jewish brothers and sisters anti-semitism is a real problem and this is how we got into the fucking gas chambers in 1943 so just seriously you know it's just like if you see a jew just love and hate him but anyway and then you're like well she's saying more that you would be like but seriously these are just jokes and if you can't laugh at a joke yeah maybe the joke's we're, on you yeah we're all, we're all brothers and sisters and you know just this no targets off limits just, and just, honestly if you caught some spray tonight i'm sorry <laughs> This life thing is hard. It's hard for yeah, every yeah, one yeah, of us. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody who says that it's easy is a lying fool. And, you know. <laughs> Listen, and I'm not saying that. And tonight, I'm gonna about to put down the machine gun. <laughs> and <laughs> because you've all, everyone's got a piece. You know, I'll, I'm an equal opportunity offender. Everyone gets. <laughs> Right, the equal opportunity offender. Like I'm that. putting down the machine. She left gun. that out. You know, you know, you know, at the end of the day. <laughs> and you you mime like taking your gun apart <laughs> clean the scope out <laughs> listen now i'm not saying that there's nothing i won't joke about but there's nothing i won't joke about this has been <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the polish up yeah, power you, hour you leave on the opposite you leave on the low the lowest note you go and say yeah it out on the, but i think the, that, the big closer is like the little closer but i i've I, there obviously you doing comedy long enough you try on like the same yeah. reason as like when you're in high school you try on different outfits yep. where you're like yo maybe I'm like a hip hop guy you know what I mean and you're like maybe I can wear a fucking uh, like a parachute pants <laughs> no we always laugh the one time it's the I had the I actually did a joke about it but it's the the all like so hats, many of my yeah. buddies wear the hat right uh -huh. like so many of my buddies they're like Toronto the cool guys so to speak yeah would wear the the br big brimmed hat. The hat that you wore when we did the feminist yeah, yeah, band, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just like the... The well, big brim hat. Not a bowler. What's it called? It's like... It's like the... And I, 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 I tried on the hat and I got laughed out of the store by all my friends because it just uh, looks so... Stu it looks like so stupid on me, right? Yeah. It's like, but it's that every ver comedian's tried on different things as a stage, right? You go, maybe I'm this. And there's like times when I've probably tried to be like, but honestly, I do. And I go, what are you, <laughs> what are you fucking doing, pal? <laughs> like, you just feel your own self looking at you like, what are you fucking doing, you loser? Yeah, of course, of course. You know. but, it, but maybe some people can put, like when and Dave some Chappelle gets, it turns into a philosopher, I guess it works for him. Like, if me or you did that, it'd be like... Yeah, I just it's not. Dude, I would, lo not, I yeah. would love to walk in on you trying out on that personality though of being like the philosopher. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on the stool and just talking about just rapping, you know? At the end of the day, the world needs more honesty. <laughs> and you know what the <laughs> There's f you know George Carlin talked about four word four letters that you four <laughs> words you can't say, but I think there's four letters that we need to say more and those letters are L O V E. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and honestly i love you i, <laughs> I love you i love right. you but most of all everybody get i love line. comedy get in the hug line everybody <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna bring this baby home i started comedy a long time ago and to see all you faces to see just a room full of jews <laughs> i'm an underground tunnel show <laughs> 
brings a tear to my eye. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, so again, we don't. <laughs> I always feel like I need to preface that we're not gonna go. We don't. We're not gonna get into the interworkings of comedy on no. a crazy regular basis. No, no, no. But no, no, no. I, I feel like I feel like guilty about it or something. Well, it's because we Mark, talk about Mark too much. Maron was like the first one to do it, and everybody liked it, and then everybody copied him. And then too many podcasts talk about comedy. I think maybe yeah. It's just one of those things. Everybody's like, yeah, I don't care about the problem you had checking into your hotel. Like on the road issues, you're like, yeah, we all have jobs and problems with our job. Yeah, I think that's why people it's just have the two inside of the stuff, and everybody's heard every little thing at this point. Yeah, even that's the true. inside comedy stuff. You're like, with the, it's just if you yeah, enough. Podcasts, no one, you know what it is. Also, it's not just comedy, and uh, th- there was an era where everyone was talking about the process yeah and it was kind of like pulling back the curtain and it's then like, it was like everyone heard all the processes and you're like we heard the process i guarantee you wrestling is exact wrestling podcasts are exactly magic the same. like when they got rid of the kayfabe shit or whatever or like they broke it down i was watching that wrestling documentary and they're talking about how like with uh uh their lawsuit remember they got that lawsuit where john Stossel, yeah, yeah, yeah it was crazy like john Stossel, rat bastard rat bastard tried to like expose uh that it was fake that it was fake and then it was like with a lawsuit and all this stuff. I wonder if I would have thought it was real or not, or I wonder if I would have guy been like, "This doesn't make sense." Uh, I mean, when I was, I like to, th- I like to think I would. Dude, known. when I was like oh, ten, yeah, but, no, but if you weren't ten, I thought the Undertaker worked at a funeral home. <laughs> Like, I literally thought the dude, like, works at a funeral home during the day with Paul nice. Bear. They're just running their I funeral I thought Mick Foley lived under a bridge. Yeah, like, I, <laughs> I for sure bought that shit. And I, you know, I remember specifically having That's a funny. conversation with my friend who, when I was, like, probably 10. And he's like, you know, this is like, it's not real. And I'm like, yes. You shut up. I was like, you shut up. <laughs> It's so real. <laughs> you shut the fuck up. But I mean, you know, they. it was interesting. And I still actually, because I never really got into wrestling podcasts a lot. And I, you know, I'm not really like, I don't watch wrestling, but I do actually sometimes will watch like, you know, interviews with like Paul Bearer and stuff because I do like that behind the scenes. But eventually you hear all the stuff. You You've know. heard all the stuff. Yeah. But I think that's, yeah. So it's, it's everything's like kind of novel and then it becomes oversaturated. And you're like, yeah, I just heard it all. I get it. Yeah. So, patreon.com slash the boys cast. I have some bangers to go over. And actually, well, whatever. I don't, I don't have to always tease it or whatever. But no. I do actually have like uh, four or five I'll things t- because I'll we are going I'll tell away. you what's really going on in those tunnels. Head on over to the Patreon. The moral of the story is I went extra hard trying to find like good shit this week. So, that's why I have a lot because we were leaving. And I was like kind of, it was like a mind fuck trying to like organize yeah. all this shit. Yeah, 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 so, I went like way harder than I normally do. Mm-hmm. Um, but patreon.com slash the boys cast. We are uh, almost at 2,500. So, we'll probably be oh, doing God, the Bugman versus Bugman when we come back. The hot. Dog, dog eating competition. We, what kind of dogs? Glizzy competition. Well, that that's going to be part of our big, our what, is it a decision. Big dog? Well, we're going to film. The, it's going to be a ha- whole half hour thing, and we're going to have those. We're going to figure that out yeah. on oh, camera, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. we're going to have all those conversations the same way we did our last Bugman versus Bugman. If you want to watch it, the furniture making competition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> furniture making. I won. <laughs> Peace.